every time I closed my eyes, I started to hear her saying, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. Hey, Chris. Chris? Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I see it. I just took a moment there. Good to see you. different. They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months, so I just told just to buzz pretty much everything off and all that, so. I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, key uh, last time? Yes, okay. they have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past this double, you're just kind of. Just do the best you can, huh? You just got to go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay, how about you guys? Good, okay. good. I did, I did not expect to see this, that's for sure. Surprised. <laughs> yes. well, well, let me put some fears aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. Um, well, they, they, they didn't know what this, this is a computer room. I was like, I didn't know how to have a computer room. Uh, <laughs> without computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you was a different situation, right? Um, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Um, nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore. Right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of more trouble at all. Um, and so that's I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. okay. Um, but why we are here, so um, so the three of us work from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick PD. Different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? And me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never ever worked a case like this where someone told me that ever, um, you know. And so, as I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so, in talking with Tanya and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? Um, so when we saw you last, you we were talking and talking and talking um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened, and we understand why that happened. But it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. Um, and then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but, um, and so that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know. Um, I think there's a lot of things that you didn't get to talk about. Um, and so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's it's interesting to me, right? Not, not one. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Shanann's family, um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him something for me? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so really that's why we're here. Are you available to talk to us? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Um, so off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that you don't want to talk about, that's okay. 
um, we might press you a little bit. Okay, we might say, well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us. Um, if we need to take any bathroom breaks, we can take bathroom breaks. Uh, you know, for anything like that. And we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this, there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM. Okay. It's, yeah, they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. just in case. That's just what they do. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things or something. Yeah. I and think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. Oh, uh, accounted for. Yeah, I think. Eleven thirty. Yeah, lunch is like eleven, but the count is like twelve fifteen. So. Okay. So in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Is like, it? It's like, good or bad? It's better, I think. Cause, I mean, it's here. I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like I was segregated, and it was like pounding on the walls all night, screaming, and just mm -hmm. you know, just talking from, me from other people. Oh, really? Okay. I they're just telling me like how I should kill myself and like what they're gonna do to me and just like all that kind of stuff. So oh, yeah. it was today this this is a lot different because I mean people here don't you know, seem to it's not like they don't care, but it's just kinda like they they don't take they don't like judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado was like they they knew why I was there and they just that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like they just if they had one second alone with me it would have been good. They were yeah. Jeez, man. Must be out then. Out of out of like what right. kind of jail? I don't know how what it was like in you know DOC there, but you know like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow, and it will. Mm -hmm. So they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez, wow. like I couldn't. I didn't see anybody else there. Like I was I was in the cell next to somebody, mm -hmm. but like I never saw them. You just hear them. <laughs> how did I know who you were? Um, I, I don't know. Years. I just, um, they, they make phone calls in there too. Oh, okay. And they got the newspaper in there before I got in that, got in there, so. Yeah. How is, uh, have you been able to talk with family? Members? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, we get, uh, from 6 p.m. to 7.30, that's our, that's our, on my unit's time out. So, we get used to going at that point. Time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it, or? Oh, it's just like, uh, it's like Secures or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put uh, money on the phone. Oh. So if I call, like, if I was, like, to dial somebody's number, they have to have, like, a phone account set up. Oh, oh I just said restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you able to talk like, family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. <laughs> good yeah, they, they don't hear from me. They're like, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. And how is it with them? Yeah, so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were gonna say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I really appreciated what they said. I don't know about you. I definitely it was. Uh, I didn't expect them to be there. Cause I knew they were there on the sixth, on the sixth, but I didn't expect them to fly back and oh. they wanted to fly back to that. So. Yeah, and then not what your mom said. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Good. Um, well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start or do, yes. you, do you have any questions for us? Go ahead. We'll start. Okay. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is, um, and I, don't, I should, I won't make any assumptions today. So are you aware that this was a national story? After, after a little while it was, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Because, I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no Nothing. Yeah, okay. So like I made I made one phone call when I was in the segregation area there, but my dad didn't thought it was like somebody like a news oh. somebody trying to call. Oh, so he didn't call, answer. Yeah, so he didn't answer. But other than that, okay, I didn't talk to anybody. But from what the some of the deputies were saying that you know, or my attorney team coming in and said, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to figure out. So, did they send you any? Did they send you any of the letters, like fan mail or anything? You will. Um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them, okay. like it with me. So like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like you know I got a bunch of just letters that had no return address and oh. stuff that was just you know not, not very good letters. Yeah. So okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we have heard. 
Definitely. There was there was one person I guess from Broomfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me, and then there was just a lot of people like writing that was like leaking through markers saying you know like you're a monster, you're, you know all kinds of crazy okay. stuff. All right. Well, I don't. We're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about obviously um, what happened with your family and so that's going to be hard to talk about i appreciate anything you can tell me about it um, if you need to take time out if you need to get a tissue that's fine right um, i think it'll be very good for you it'll be good for us um, and so one of the reasons i asked about that national attention is um, we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters um, a lot of interest and then us personally as law enforcement we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Um, had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent. <laughs> yeah, yeah Trent. that guy. That, that, that blew my mind. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And who told you about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we talk, talk about him? Yes. <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. Waste yeah. our lives. Yes. So Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear. Not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. Um, and if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way, you know. So um, if it's true, I hope that you can just casually say, yeah, I mean, this happened. It wasn't as bad as he said, but maybe this happened. So his story was um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe with men. And so he said, met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, I had a couple of meetings in the parking lot, and that was basically it. Does any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. No, I never met the guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards. So. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. I've never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven up there to see someone. Yeah. Um, and so this is maybe a weird question for you. And uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? No. Okay. Ever had a time, experimented, wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, he just found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never, I mean, you had my phone, so okay. I mean, you could probably, yeah, we know. You could probably saw what app I had. But I've never even heard of the app, but okay. apparently, like, he told me, like, uh, I met him through, like, a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, oh. that was another guy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It was, it was totally. I no idea. So did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay. He was like, well, this guy, I'm like, he was, John was kind of, you know, making fun. I'm like, you know what? Sure. Okay. I'm like, no. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, Big like, lips. Did you see the, mm -hmm. his giant lips? Yeah, I was like, I have no clue who this guy is. And he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember. Um, he's, he's, he was kind of meek. Yeah. But also a little bit um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, he did fake lips, or not fake lips, but injections. Uh -huh. He was very into skincare and makeup. Um, and he mentioned that one of the times, just as a gift, you got him some skincare products. Mm -hmm. Does any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. You can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with. Okay, so that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Bolts. There was another gal that you were dealing with. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Okay. Wow. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah, he, uh, he had like. Yeah, that's the same picture. Yeah, no, does, that, does that look familiar? That's the same picture he showed me on the okay. MSL one time. I was looking, I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said it was like a Chick fil A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. And and that's just not true. That's what she's no. claiming. Okay. Um, I only wanted to one Chick fil A car. Oh, that was the one in. Broomfield, Highway 7. Okay. That was it. Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? 
happen it does make us think um, you know there may have been others and so Nicole was the only one that was the only one was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done no okay alright um, do you mind if we talk a little bit more about Nicole sure. okay. so walk me through it because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about right um, we didn't we just kind of skipped on and you know talked about where the girls were but so what happened there so it was probably around Hi, June first or something. That's when I first met her, and uh, it was just like a work conversation. That she messed with the gas meters that you know we were out in the field, and I was messing up. And then you know I took it to her like, hey, you know, how, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it? And you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office, and I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me because like when I when we were talking back and forth, I would say. Uh, you know, like we moved here from Colorado or from North Carolina, stuff like that. And then uh, she's like, "What's all this weed stuff?" You come like, "God, oh, took out my phone, showed her a picture." Like, you know, my girl's on the phone. It's like, "Oh, okay." She's like, so you're like, "Yeah." But, you know, I don't wear I didn't wear a ring at work because like, I got something off, so get refitted. Like, I lost all that weight. So, but um, you lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight. Yeah, it was literally like I was out in the snow one time. I went like that, and my ring went off on the rocks. So I was just, like, I was panicking trying to find out that I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> But, um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days, and she texted me outside the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just, you know, just like, you know, like she used to work in a oil rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of straightened the stories back and forth about what we did and everything. And then one day, it just kind of went to a different, different level. And then I never thought it would ever go to that level. but. Yeah. She was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. After, after, uh, yeah, we were in San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June, and uh, we met up after after we got after we got back. And uh, how did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Thornton. At, yeah, Thornton somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other. My nice whole month of July. So let me ask you this: um, You tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first. Okay, from both sides. Yeah, okay. they were just kind of like feeling each other out. It's kind of yeah. like I don't. I mean, yeah. Um, and so, texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just flirting. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Because um, the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, no, I wish I was down the field more instead of at the office. Those down the field. Yeah, yeah. I kind of see it in your eyes. That's uh, that's kind of where the path started, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because when I was a field, when I went from a, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we we're going to go, and everything like that. And, you know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. and instead of like coming to the office, like for more than an hour. Right. And just gave me more time to run into her, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married first? She did, once I showed her the pictures yeah. on the phone. Yeah. On the, like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. and so so okay. was your wife in that picture, or was it just your girls? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the, like, the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married, my kids. Okay. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? What did you think about that? We were just like, just trying to save face, trying to, you know, I uh, just trying to, and some of my sister said it was like, uh, just trying to 
keep things together. You yeah. Know, just talk. She, she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like, um, just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her, because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kind of different sides from the media and everything, so. And Have friends. you talked to her at all? No. no. I'm no. hoping she hasn't like, you know, written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Um, right, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope that. Okay. No one's told you that then? No, I mean, I would I would expect, like, a, I, I thought, like, Colorado had said, like, on a DOC list, of, if you're on, a, like, a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same, but okay. I've just talked to my sister, parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Okay. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to... Just get some closure? Just to say, like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry, I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through, like, if you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, different state, if you had to leave everything behind. I just wanted to let you know, I'm sorry, and that this is not something I ever saw in my life happening or happening to somebody else either. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. Do you want us to? Do you want us not to? And if she would want to even talk to you guys, then I'm not sure if someone comes up. I'm sure if she'd answer your phone call more than an attorney phone call that she didn't want to call. Answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that they figured out, I guess, where she lived. And they left a call, a uh, business card there. And she just, pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said, she said, stop. Stop coming around. Yeah. 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 I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else, so. And hopefully it's calmed down since, but. But uh, I'm sure, like, I just hope she can, like, move, like, I don't know if there's, like, normalcy for her, not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure, like, that would have been hard if she did. Mm hmm. Tend to win a darker was her dream job, so that's one thing I always like asked my attorneys. Is like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job. So, mm -hmm. oh really? Yeah. Where did she meet? Oh, uh, like the get like an oil company in a darker was like, you know, I mean, unless you're working for like BP or like kind of or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And a darker was like, you know, with like big leagues. Yeah. Can I ask kind of a mm -hmm. tough question? Mm -hmm. Um, did you love her? I felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think, like when you say, like, more, more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I've never, like, been perceived by anybody before it's kind of like I was the one you know trying to pursue because like when me and Shanann met it was like you know she was always like pushing me away kind of like you know she was sick for a while right oh yeah she had yeah she was uh she had just got diagnosed with lupus and she was on like a bunch of different medications and stuff and um it was like I guess I wish one of her type and you weren't her type? I, I wasn't her type. Okay. Was like, she, she, she told me like when, I, when, I, when she first, because we had met. She told you that? <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah. I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, when we first met, like, it was at a movie theater. And my uh, cousin's ex-wife set us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't, think that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know, like, that. Before we have any games. So she was fancy well, was and he was in cool. like shorts and tennis shoes or something, like, right? Shoes and, like, I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit. And I was just like, this isn't good. And, like, was it a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? It, it was Kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter. And apparently it, 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 they give you like champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, uh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. yeah I, think he came, I think he came like he was going to a... Like I was Cinemax, like, like, uh, like, like I was going to a bar, like an AMC, like a play theater. <laughs> no, it was like like you like movie just watch theater? the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like you know a Jack and Coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and just whatever. But like uh, yeah, when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk to the bartender a little more. 
<laughs> no, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not you're here to meet. But yeah, like, it was, I was, like, persistent trying to pursue something. I, I, I liked her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, even, even, like, even on the first day, like, I couldn't even eat anything, really. I was just like, you know, just nervous. Hell yeah. Really? Yeah. I was just, and she was just, like, you know, chowing down. And she was like, you eat like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's fine. Oh, that's and she talked to my parents, like, you know, months later. She's like, this guy just never ate. And like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. This trash disposal. I was like, no, that wasn't not around me. I was like, well, I'm just nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always, like, shaking and everything. But, um. Yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just like um, finally, I just I grew on to her. Like you know, I would always like like with her medications and stuff. I would always like she had like eight bottles of medications, so I would always get like her day and nights and kind of like put them all in that little you know flip open the pill box, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you know, I would always you know be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy. She said after that she knew that was like a, kind of a keeper. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, I, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody? Right. But it's a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go across the last class field? And I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. Like, I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, <that's, laughs> or she's in the bathroom that's all day. That's a good test. <laughs> <laughs> like, that clear stuff that's not really, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it felt like a great, it was a great relationship. Everything was, everything was great. Now you're yeah. talking about with Kessinger? No, with uh, Tom Welsh and, and yeah. um, like in the first first year, you know, like, you know, my parents never, oh, I don't know, my mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I was, I was the baby, I guess, I never, you know, but this, I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of oh. like she never like really saw me like. Oh, like, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I, when I turned 18, I graduated, I never moved back. Okay. That, that at home, so and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> Sorry. So how old were you when you met Shanann? I was twenty-five. It was twenty ten. So okay. So no serious hmm. girlfriends before that. Not nothing more than like six months or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there was a, there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like you know. I, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann. She would just actually got divorced, and I should, should have never did that. But it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm-hmm. she went on to somebody else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy. The rebound guy. Yeah. Pretty much. But you know, that's, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted to maybe a more dominant personality. It seemed like it because I'm more of the just reserved. I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. But then, like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed like. So I get that. I'm the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't think that's right with you, but. <laughs> so then, and I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but. Um, and, and one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves. Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris does not. No. Like this, just it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better because we never really got that chance, did we? Um, we were talking twice. Yeah. Met you once. Yeah. Probably like three. Well, you remember three or four times, probably. So then, with do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I guess you do. I would call her Nikki. Okay. Hello. There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right, there is. Okay. I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. And like, she'd actually, like, ask me, like, like, my opinion on a lot of things. And just, like, what I wanted to do. And just kind of like, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. Oh, that's fascinating to me. And so did it feel more like... An equal partnership, or it seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Would she say, "I want to go somewhere"? Was it a two thousand? I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the Orchard, about the hundred forty fourth over there, and you know, I asked her like, "Yeah, you want to go see this movie?" And like, she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And we just we got there. It was sold out. And you know, normally probably just happy. You know, I'm just 
wait two hours, like, no, just go home. But now she just wanted to walk around and just talk. And like, okay. Oh, wow. So that was, that was different. And, you know, I think she wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum in Boulder. I've never been there. And I was That's like, right up your alley. So yeah. I, I was just like, that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so. And then, you know, drag race in Andamere. Okay. And I haven't been to a drag race since. 2008. Now in Charlotte. Okay. We looked at a full lane drag strip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the top fuel, mm -hmm. fun car stuff. Like me and my dad used to grow up. And yeah. Go there like all the time. And then like uh, we went to camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park. Mm -hmm. And I never, I, I never been camping. I always wanted to do it. I thought it was she done it like countless times. I oh guess. really? Okay. So, She's outdoorsy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she, she, I guess she, every time, like, she even needed to clear her head, she'd just go by herself and just go somewhere. Oh. Yeah. So she's a completely new type of uh, person and relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what were you thinking this whole time? Like, in the back I did, of your head? I, in the back of my head, I was just telling myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, every time... You know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, and, like, of my wife and my kids, and just like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself. And, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just, you know, talk to them, you know, say, like, like I have like this book, uh, I used to read for CC, and I, I remember that book, so I read that to, to them like every night, and like there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so I just try to, you know, just try to think back, like I wish <laughs> this never happened, it was like I wish that blinder wasn't on my head, wasn't in my eyes, that would have seen what was going on, like you know, I was having, like, everybody said, oh you're just out, out there having fun while your kids, you know, were kids and wife were on vacation. I'm just like, no, I'm just, it wasn't like that, but it seemed like that's what it looked like when, you know, when you're going, you know, when you're going to camping, you're going to drag race, going all this other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else, it's not your family. It just didn't seem right. And, you know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I could even see that anymore. Yeah. And I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like, I didn't have that time at home just to really think about anything because literally I didn't like I was only at home from like when I got home from work I worked out I ate dinner and then I went over house like I was never at home. I never slept in my house in, like the whole month of July now talk me through that though when you said you went home and then you were at her house was that while Chanel was gone oh okay so you weren't even at your house no this all happened so quickly didn't it it, it was insane quickly like I didn't like she even told me like she would never in like a normal relationship she would never have somebody over at her house like more than like a, once or twice a week but she yeah. felt like she wanted me over there yeah she said she felt comfortable over there yeah so it was just like that's what was different like she wanted me over there but I, I just wish that all that would just go away I just wish I had almost like a I know it's hard to, I know it's wrong to say I wish I never met somebody, but I wish I'd, you know, maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way. I think if we had a time machine, mm. I don't think this would happen again. Sure. Because some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it would have been the next time. It just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Uh -huh. And it happened so quickly that you tell me if I'm wrong, you're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't I didn't take control of the situation. It just like the situation controlled me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that man. I'm, I'm somewhat passive myself and it's like, you know, there's situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? You know? Yeah. I don't know why it was like it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching and taking on and just never gave up. Yeah. Can we talk about the hardest subject? Um, so when we were talking, the last time we talked, um, 
the last thing we talked about was where the girls were, mm -hmm. but we never really got to talk about that night. So what happened? So nothing really happened that night. It was in the morning. Okay. It was, you know, me and Shannon, she got home like at 2 o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her get in the bed. And I just felt like I didn't really didn't, didn't feel like I just make sure I looked at my phone at 2 o'clock and make sure she's okay, she's in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, I just had a feeling that she knew like what was going on. Cause, I mean, obviously, I didn't use like a like an NRO gift card, you know, that I'd gotten. I'd used my actual credit card, and I, I kind of just felt like something. She knew what was going on, and she, uh, she started rubbing her hand on me, and we ended up having sex. But uh, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Oh, I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because when we talked, uh, when I woke up or later on in the morning, like, you know, I I pretty much, you know, told her, like, you know, I didn't think it was going to work anymore. And she was like, what happened? What was last night? You know, mm -hmm. so I figured that that's what the test after I've gone through everything in my head. That makes sense. And she just told me, you know, like, to get off of her. And she's like, I knew some, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else, and there was somebody else. And I, just, I couldn't bring it up, I couldn't just say, yes, there is somebody else, but then she said, like, never gonna see the kids again, never gonna see them again, get off me, don't hurt me. And then, is that what she said? That was, because like when I climbed in bed, that was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her, how to do it. Okay. She thought I was gonna like, you know, hurt her or her baby or something. So, because she, she knew that, like, you know, I, something had happened. She thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. So, yeah. and then that's when that happened. And I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit deeper about that? So, she comes home. Uh, you know, she touches him, you guys have sex, it seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Um, it sounds like you do too. I'm sure, like, you know, Nikki or, or not so Nikki, uh, like Cole Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know. That's what I was thinking, right? They talked about it during that whole weekend. More than like that. That's my parents told me there was like a, uh, going through like text messages, it's like all, like, pretty much, they all kind of just told her he's with somebody else. Type of deal. Yeah. And she spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's mm -hmm. what we found, mm -hmm. from, right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home. Uh, you guys have sex. And then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up or did you wake up for work? Not a lot more. Oh, okay. And you're going to work out. Mm -hmm. But then that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. And she was pretty mad. Yeah, she, I mean, it was, I, I already kind of knew that, you know, I, using that credit card, it was kind of, it was. Was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I, like, you know, I, I used, like, because I got these anarcho gift cards from, like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that, and I had used them all. Oh. Well, was, was part of you just like, ah, screw it, whatever, I don't care, I'm using this card. I, I was, I, Part of me just wants to say, Nick, you can pay for this, but right. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even, I think, um, from my, my attorney said she even knows I used a different card, like a blue card. Oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just using a normal bank account or something, but, you know, you know, I told her I was going to Rocky, I told you, told you I was going to Rocky. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, it, even, uh, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like, just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like, gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me to, because like, it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game, you want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? Like, in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, uh, just yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't find a babysitter. 
thinking. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch and my head goes off, light switch and her head goes mm -hmm. off, maybe it just like goes different directions. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out, it seems like. So I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann, did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said that to me before. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of hard to hear. Yeah, because she'd said to me before she went to Arizona. Because, like, I wasn't really sleeping in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slammed the door. You're never going to see the kids again. So, yeah, was, did she get fiery like that? Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her that, that way. Yeah. And that was... The, a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was uh, probably back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it was just like one of those, just, it was just a fiery argument that yeah. I never, like, I never raised my voice to her or anything, and like, you know, I like, I just got mad and I slammed the door, and she's like, ow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I should have slammed the door. Is that when you were in North Carolina that last week? No, it was like, like previous to that. This is like 2010, 2011. Oh, okay. it was like early, early, early. Okay. And her old house before kids. Yes. Were you dating? Or were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some, I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something, and like I was just like this, and, and she was like, you know, don't have that happen again, and I'm just like. I can have friends right. that are females. Like, right. I don't even talk to this woman anymore. Right. And it was just like, get out. Nope. Was she fiery? Did she have that Italian blood that her mom has? Good Lord, yes. <laughs> <laughs> was she always like that? Or was she, uh, did she snap at things? Uh, it's, she would snap at me, but you could tell, like, you know, something something really irked her a little bit. Yeah. It, was, it would come out. Zero to a hundred type thing, or what? I've, yeah, zero to like, yeah, 200. Oh, interesting. She's, she's, she gets acclimated about something. She's like, all right, it's going to happen. Well, that's why she was probably so successful at Thrive, right? Oh, yeah, like she had done yeah. a couple other like direct sales business, but this one was just like, it was different. Why? This one, like, uh, cause I think she had done like uh, Origami Owl and like something called like uh, It Works and then like uh, some other, 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 a couple other things like some bags and stuff like stuff like that with the supplement stuff but just because it worked with her mm -hmm. it worked with me she's like okay i can kind of like use this as like all right this is what's doing for us yeah and then like after a little while like she could see how like people are above her how it was helping them and then it was just like trickle down effect mm -hmm. and it was like a good system about like you know commission wise and everything and everything was just she could use all the business IQ she has from running those cell phone shops mm -hmm. and from the very soft custom shops and all that. I mean, she she mm -hmm. business minded. Yeah, she knows how to do a counting book like yeah. in the back of her hand. So, so it all just like fell into place with all that. So huh. then on that night, was it just a new type of fight? It was, it was it never it had or what? Was, what happened? Yeah, it was a totally different type of fight. It was like, you know it was. It just felt like, I don't know, it was more anger than, than anything else. Like, there was emotion to it at first, and then it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like, you know, like, like there was no love there. It was kind of like, what we were saying, what she was saying, it was just like, it's almost like we knew, like, something was combating at, at, at each other. And we didn't know, like, it, was, it wasn't ourselves. Really? No. Anger from you or anger from her? I think it was more anger from me and more, like, desperation from her. Because she wanted it, basically. Yeah. She knew. She knew if something was right. Like, you know, like when the whole thing with my parents happened with the somebody, my parents called it Nutgate. What happened? Nutgate. What's that? Oh, the, yeah. peanut, the peanut. Oh, oh yeah. Or what the peanut peanut. Oh, with the, her family? Yeah. Uh, yeah Pistachio yeah, yeah. ice cream or whatever. Yeah, yeah they, people nut gate, they call it Nutgate. I haven't people. heard that. I haven't heard that either. Yeah, I guess what people are calling it. Okay. But, uh, that was like another out, like, you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything with Nikki and just kind of concentrated on helping like whatever happened there. Cause yeah. like, Shan had a story, my mom had a story. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, whatever happened, I, I probably asked my 10 year old nephew 
probably can tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons, and they both didn't see it the other person's way. And yeah, and like maybe I, because I could, I didn't talk to my parents from then on until like August sixth, and like you know, my dad took that whole week off. Wow. You didn't talk to your parents from then on? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because like my Janelle was like, do not talk to them, do not call them, do not do anything. Is that what she said? Yeah. And uh, the uh, Cece's birthday was the 17th, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August? July. July. Yeah. And uh, like my, my mom or my dad was going to go, but then there was like a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. She had a baby, and I was like, no, I just can't, can't do it anymore. Just like, because... He, he perceived that as her taking a shot type thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like she always says she never, you know, put those posts uh, directed at anybody. But I, like, she, she had a method. If you read them, you know who yeah. she's talking about. She had a method to the madness, <clears throat> and you, know, you can see it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's, I wish I could have just took more time just to fix that. Because, yeah. like, I was, like, I wanted my parents to be involved. Like, since, you know, like, the whole wedding thing, and then up to that, it was like, you know, my mom and my sister were always like you know, combating with Shanann, Shanann combating with them. Mm -hmm. My dad was always cool. Like, he's just like me. He's just like, you know, go with the flow. Like, I just want everybody to do a long time deal. Shakes, man. I loved your dad. Oh, he's the best. Mm -hmm. Isn't he? I so, loved your dad. I'm sorry, keep going. That's cool. Um, I just wish I could have, like, just when we were in, uh, we were at the beach in August. Like my dad was supposed to let's take two the whole week off just so we could see the kids and like uh, see me and like grab a cook out at my sister's house or something. And then, but we just pretty much spent five days at the beach and Shenan had like booked it. So like, you know, I mean, I, it's, I don't want to say like punishment for them not to see the kids, but like I wanted them to see it, mm -hmm. see them. You know, just, I wish I could have fixed it all, fixed all that. And I, I even like when I was at the beach, I told Shenan that it was more like, like what was going on was more of like I feel like you know because my dad's my hero I feel like I've lost like something in my life I haven't talked to him for three weeks mm -hmm. and I've been seeing see the kids for three weeks you know FaceTime or anything mm -hmm. and I wanted them to be able to have that relationship and they not she was pretty much gone ho like she tried to kill my daughter by giving her pink I was like that's not, that's like, I don't think she gave it to her <laughs> I know was that her stance is that your mom Put that, put something in front of CC. Like to kill her or no, just, just, to, just like, like, didn't care. Like, like, didn't pay attention. She, she, she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like, people think, oh, you're like fine. Like it's made up like, kind of thing. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll just have a rash. He'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I've seen CC, you know, like the first time, well, I've seen a picture of when he had a cast the first time. It wasn't good. And then she had a kiwi the second time and then the same thing happened. And, um, I know it's real. Do you know it's serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it wasn't like her throat like closed up, but she broke out in this full body rash that looked really mm -hmm. crazy looking. And luckily, like you know, nothing, nothing with her throat like happened. But um. So did that make you angry to at your mom for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I just like, mom, you just gotta. I told her you need to think, you need to like, you know, pay attention. Just because another kid can have something doesn't mean another kid can have something. Because like when we were at that birthday party at Jeremy's on that Sunday. You know, they had this cake there. Like, Bella, Bella wanted it so bad. I'm like, can't give it to me because Cece can't have it. She was like, you know, okay. And all the other kids were like, if she, they can't have the cake, you know? They're like, I just kind of took them off and gave them some, like, uh, like uh, one of those frozen pops or mm -hmm. something. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like she had to learn that just because one cake has something and there's another kid that can't have it for a legitimate reason, like, you know, she couldn't have done it, but, you know. That's the kind of talk I had with her when Shannon called me. I think it was maybe like middle of July or something when she told me all this had happened. Mm -hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while, and then they're just like, you know, they just couldn't deal with her anymore. Shannon just kind of like, you know, it like flipped out. And my nephew told Bella to go hide behind the curtain because I don't think your mom was going to let you come over here again or something like that. Aww. So it got heated. Oh, they were. It was bad. Really? Yeah, they, it was it was like a last straw between them, I think. Like in the same room or over the phone? No, they were at, at, the, at they were, and so they at were my, really at my mom's house. Yeah, because CC and Bella and my niece and nephew were there. Okay. How did so, Shanann find out about the ice cream thing? Because uh, Shanann was there, and um, I guess they were all sitting 
uh, one, one of those couches, kind of like a U. And my niece went into the kitchen, and she knew where the ice cream was. She'd um, been there. She'd been there. So it's house. not like your mom gave it to her? Like she oh, got no, her no, own she, ice cream? Yeah, she went in the freezer, got it, went out, and stopped beside Cece and started eating. So, but like, it's just a matter of like, Cece could go like, right, right. like that. Now, I, don't, I don't know what would happen if she just got it on her hand. Right. But like, I know on like the prick test, you know, mm -hmm. on, her, on the back, it's like a well. <laughs> So were they staying there at your parents' house during that time? Cause yeah, it was, um, so they would go from my, uh, from Sandy and Frank's house yeah. for like a few days or five days and then go to my mom and dad's house yeah. for a couple of days and come back and forth. Okay. So it happened during that time? Mm -hmm. You were there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so there were so many things that happened, weren't there? They just were little tiny ingredients to this yeah, recipe. Not, yeah, nothing like... It's nuts, Chris. I mean, it's just so many things just didn't go your way. Everything was like, a, like somebody was stirring a pot and it was just... Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. So then, I know I keep bringing it up. Can you walk me through the, just the last few minutes before Shenanda? It was pretty much just, like I had gotten dressed for work and then like we started talking. Did she come to you? No, I was, I was just right there in bed. Oh, just, okay. Yeah. So I was just like, I got my blue shirt on, I'm not and everything. You're ready to go. I was ready to go. And was she asleep, or did, did you have to wake her up to finish your conversation? I uh, wake her up, because like she, she, she got home like 2 o'clock, so she was she pretty much out of it. But I never knew like if like if her plane got delayed. Someone, someone always told me like she just like sat around with Nicole and just like talked for a while and came home or something. I'm not sure if that yeah, was, was true. It was delayed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, when she came home and everything, but, yeah, like, I, I, I woke her up to talk to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is that because it was just eating at your brain? Yeah, like, I, I knew, like, you know, something, like, it's something that just felt right with me. So I know, like, she knew. I'm, I just, I just knew she knew. I just felt like maybe, like, maybe the kids weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, interesting. Now, um... I don't mean to offend, but I have to ask, is that really the truth? Okay. I really felt like there was, they weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh. And like so, she would take them somewhere? No, I just, I, just, I just felt like either maybe I wouldn't go home, maybe they weren't going to be there, or I wouldn't be allowed in, type of thing. I think I saw some text messages where Shania talked about um, that she would take the kids to another state or something because she couldn't wouldn't be able to afford to live in Colorado or something like that. Did she say that kind of stuff to you, or yeah. what did she say about that? She said she couldn't afford to live in Colorado by, on her own, and that uh, I told her like, well, you know, drive, and she pretty much makes the same amount I do. Yeah. But uh, uh, she said she would she wouldn't want to try just because you know Colorado just, just the price of living there was a lot higher than North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And just so just so I'm clear, you thought maybe she was she. In your mind, you thought maybe she would take the kids somewhere else or, like, lock you out of the house or... Or just, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make a scene, like, you know, trying to, like, pound on the door, trying to get in or anything like that. Mm -hmm. like, I just felt like, you know, that that was what I did on Sunday. You know, it was kind of like, or Saturday night, was kind of like the last draw. Kind of like going out with somebody and using uh, that cooking account card and just, like, not trying to hide it at all. So walk me through it, though, because she comes home. She touches you, you guys have sex, you fall asleep, then you wake up for work, all natural, all, you know, a normal day's work type thing. Yeah. What was it that made you think, I just can't do this anymore, I have to talk to her? I, it was eating away at me, like, I yeah. knew, like, something, I knew everything that I did, like, I know, like, when I was with Nikki, it was, you know, different, like, I wasn't even, like, in the realm of, I'm a dad, I'm a husband type thing. Oh. And then, like, like I, like I was saying, when I'm never at home, like, sleeping in my own bed, and, like, I have no, like, concept of that anymore. Interesting. Because so in your mind and heart, you can have moved on. Like, it was, it just, it kind of felt like if I wasn't at home, like, I didn't think about it, almost. Because, like, I, if I wasn't sleeping on my own, like, I think there was one, at one point, like, Nikki had gone to the mountains with her friends for, like, a few days, like, end of June, first part of July. And then, like, you know, that part, you know, obviously, obviously I was at home. But, like, from that whole month of July on, it was like, I was never at home. Mm -hmm. Like, I never had all those reminders around me. I never mm -hmm. had, you know, 
like every time my wife would call me, I would be at Nikki's house. Oh. While she was in North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. And I would like, you know, walk outside or uh-huh. talk to her, like when I was next to the car or something like that. And, uh, uh-huh. I would never be at home looking like, just have all these pictures around me, just being in the same bed, you know, seeing my kids in bed, seeing everything that, uh-huh. you know, that we built for the last six years. And so, did you just want to once and for all get it out in the open? I just, I just wanted to just tell her how I was feeling at that point in time. Like, I didn't feel like me and her were compatible anymore. Yeah. I honestly, I didn't feel like that because what was going on with Nikki, it, just, it was new. It was new. Right, absolutely. Anything that's new always feels better than the old. Yes. And you were probably bitten better. by the love bug. Yeah, it, that's it, how a lot of therapists talk about it. Yeah. But it was just like, I never felt that. I mean, even like with new relationships in the past, like it always feels different, like you know, the first couple of weeks, and then you know. But it just with someone with Nikki felt different. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like you said, like you know, I was more in control, and like it was more of like maybe more of me coming out. Because mm-hmm. Nan always said, like it always seemed I was more myself around other people, like you know, her cousin Cody, like you know, like she. Uh, Cody lived or came up, visited us for a little bit while we were in Colorado for a little while. And Cody always talked about, you like, how oh, Chris is so funny. Chris is like, Sam was always just like, why oh, are you never like that with me? I'm just like, you know, maybe I always felt nervous about you. There's only so much oxygen in the room, right? I say I this to some people with dominant personalities, mm-hmm. you know? I just always felt nervous. I always felt like I was, you know, I never could actually just, you know, be myself. Right. Nikki, I was myself like all the time. It was just different. Well, and it seems as though, and again, it's hard to talk about it. You tell me if I'm wrong, but it also seems, uh, is it accurate to say that sexually you were able to say, Nikki, this is what I would like. This is what I'm into. Or blah blah blah. Maybe not what you am. No, Nikki just wanted. I mean, she wanted what she wanted. She wanted to do it pretty much all the time. I was just like, okay, that's mm-hmm. fine with me. You know, okay. You know, and it was just like. Like, hey, <laughs> sometimes it happens, sometimes it didn't. But it, that wasn't that wasn't the case as far as that way. It wasn't just like sex or whatnot. But okay. it was mainly I was just more myself. I could like you know, just not think about what I was going to say or plan what I was going to say or not you know gonna say something stupid or something. But <laughs> right, a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Can I ask you something about that morning that you had sex with Shanann? Did you feel at all like maybe you were kind of cheating on Nikki by doing that? I felt strange. I felt like, you know, the first time I was with Nikki, I felt weird. First time. Like, sure. And then the last time I was with Shannon, I felt totally strange. I was just like, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. I, didn't, I felt like I'd become people I see on TV. And that did not feel right with me. Like, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what had happened to me. Mm-hmm. So I, Nikki even asked me, like, are you... Yeah, have you done this before? Have you ever strayed away? I'm like, I've never even thought about it. It's like, what's, what's different? It's like, I guess it's just you that's different because I've just never actually, like, like, I've seen girls smile at me before, never done anything about it with her. It was just like, it's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. Mm-hmm. As soon as she walked, I'm like, what the heck the hell is that going on? So. Well, and Tammy brings up a very good point. I wonder if that last time with Shanann having sex had a somewhat of a role in you thinking like a trigger? I, I gotta do something, I gotta say something, we gotta have a talk, something's gotta change. Is yeah, that I accurate? Yeah, I just I felt like it was like maybe like a trigger point or something like like you hit the push button on a on a bomb and it just blows up. Right. Just something in my head was just like something just like just something was urgent. Just like I had to say something. Okay. So then exactly what did you say and what happened? So when I woke her up, and it's like, hey, we just gotta, just gotta talk. Okay. And just like I told her, I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is gonna work. I just, you know, I don't wanna. Like, can we cancel a trip to Aspen? Cause she had booked a trip that week oh. to go to some like mystery four-star luxury hotel or something. Mm-hmm. Just the two of you or the whole family? Just me and her. Okay. And she had a uh, man to fair. Couldn't watch the kids that week, that weekend or something. Okay. And. Uh, I was just like, can we cancel that? Can we like do something? Like, but from what I remember, I even said, can we move to Brighton <laughs> just to get away from like this house? Oh, but like, I'm not sure if that was like, 
like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot. It, that conversation was so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together to not staying together to just like all of the above. Okay. So this is half an hour, an hour or what? Uh, uh, definitely not more than half an hour. I don't think. Okay. I don't think. Are you crying? Is she crying? Yeah, it's, it's back and forth. It's like, you know, she's she's got, you know, mascara. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on still, so mascara is running all over her and stuff like that. And yeah, it was and nothing nothing about that conference. I just wish I could take all of it back. Just to be, just the, the whole Nikki thing back, everything. Really. So then when did it turn? As far as that conversation? Mm -hmm. Just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. That's what happened. What happened? She told me to get off her and up on the end. Okay. Did you say she said something like that you were hurting the baby or something? That yeah, was before that. Because like when I was straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got off, when we got on the bed. That's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm -hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? I don't know. Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you knew. Just like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know. Like, like, I try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. Everything just kind of like. Felt like you had to. It just felt like it was. I don't even want to say it. it. Felt like I had to. It just felt like there was already something in my mind that was implanted that I was going to do it, and I woke up that morning it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before. It was just like I don't want. Like when, like like you said, like in the sentencing hearing that prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes for something like that to happen. Like, why, why can't I just let go? I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I just let was go. Was it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like, I don't even want to know what, what she saw when she looked back at me, honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? She wasn't fighting. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? Uh, maybe she was praying, maybe she was just... Now I read, read the Bible and said, you know, like, you know, uh, or the scripture says, don't uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she was saying that, I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she, you know, like, like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and step check for defensive wounds, and like, you know, there wasn't going to be any, she didn't fight, mm -hmm. I don't know. Why? Like she didn't grab, could she grab your arms or were her arms pinned down or? I don't, not, not that I remember, I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I don't think like I moved to where my knees were or around her arms or anything, but it was just kind of like when I got on top of her and we, we started talking, it was that was it. It's kind of like in my head, or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen. And just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like, that's what happened. I just wish I could have let go. Did it seem like it was that long, two to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? Almost kind of felt like it was, felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but I just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like, like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not, not letting go. At some point there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, how that's the only way I can describe it, honestly. Like a snap or something. I mean, I, don't, I know, I guess my attorney had said like some, you know, you know, Strangulation is more of like a, I don't know, passionate type thing. I'm just like, I don't know how that can be passionate. It's just intimate because you're right in there, yeah. using your own hands. 
It's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that. So. I just it just felt like somebody was like behind me, just like just mm -hmm. I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you're just like maybe felt out of control or maybe felt like I don't know why I couldn't stick, take a step back or you know like even when you said when your buddy was like let's go to the football game you wanted to say yes you just couldn't yeah, I wanted to like I, I never been I haven't been to a football game since North Carolina so I was just like yeah sure like, just, I wanted to say that yeah I wanted to just, just text him yeah yeah no it was it fell through can it go So, then what? Just, um, just after, you know, Shanann was, I guess, once, it, once I was, once she was gone, it was just like, I, I didn't know what, what was going on. It's like, it was like a traumatic, I don't know what we call it, traumatic event type, mm -hmm. and everything, and like, I was shaking, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind, I don't think like, like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say, like, why well, don't you just call 911? Why don't like, unless you're in that situation, you know, you don't, you don't know. You don't know what you would have done. Mm -hmm. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Like, like you said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they've gone through their mind that point in time. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you'd have done. So, what happened next? Is that what happened, Bill Kingman? What she said. Mom, mom. Did she hear something? Is that what she? Obviously, I think. Okay. What you tell me? Mommy don't feel good. And then, did that happen with Bella right in that room? Not in front of her. What happened? She just she walked in as you know. She's talking about. Did you take her back to her room? I put Shannon in that sheet and found the site. Okay. And what? Well. So, carried her downstairs and backed my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. So then Shannon's in the truck. Then with Back to the house. Got okay, everybody back in the truck. Was Bella first or was Cece first? In the truck? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So she was first, and then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put it, when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? I woke back up. Okay. I don't really want to talk about this part, honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. It's my baby. I have to talk to them every night. I hope to see how it's going to Okay. Every time I see pictures of them, I don't know how this could have happened. Being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos, we see that love that you had for your girls, like, it's obvious to us, and even to us, we, it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's giving piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things, um, how you get to that point, you know? Like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was like to fight back. Yeah. 
like when that prosecutor said it felt a bitter tongue, like repeatedly, I just, I just wanted to just bang my head up against the wall. So you put Shinyan in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats, or, or I guess they didn't probably have car no, seats that, in your no, truck, did no, they? No, they were sitting in the back with the, like in that, that bench. And so Shinyan was back there too? She was on the floor. What did they say about Shinyan being on the floor? Mommy, okay. What'd you tell them? She'll, she'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them, like their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had they had some they had something with them that they carried. One of them, I think, had I think CC and Bella had like a blanket or something with them, mm -hmm. like a pink, a pink blanket or. What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? That talked or the dog. Yeah, CC. Yeah, yeah, one of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. Try to, try to, it's harder to remember. Like yeah. if they had like the big blanket, small blanket. So, I think I saw um, on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans uh, when you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I feel like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this. Sleep. Yeah. Did you just think about that? <laughs> what did you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what had happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything happened, not the definite thought. Yeah. See, it's interesting to me, um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together and if you were all going to pass together. That to me makes sense, because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? Family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is, um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what was going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't deserve to live. Yeah. And it was like, whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself, you know, was, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. So what made you not do that, do you think? I don't know if it was just more of like a, because with the with the site, maybe it was just more of like I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else. But I know there was other people out there, not like at the site, but other people like maybe out in the area. Like I didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up, and then other people around would get hurt in the same. So you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there or an explosion or something or just, just no not not for not for that just like maybe I could just take care of myself and that would have been that wow. I mean, gasoline that's the only thing you do. I mean I don't have like I don't have a gun I don't have anything like that it's not like you just commit suicide that way but so just, just like, to blow yourself up I mean it was just I wasn't thinking. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, it was. I mean, I don't have. I don't have weapons. I don't. Have, I've never hunted before in my life. I don't know what. I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah. yeah. I remember you kept telling me that. You kept saying, "I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy. I didn't know." Like, yeah. When you asked me about the sheet, like, what were you doing? Like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I think you were just like in automatic mode, or it seemed like. So did you str drive straight out there? What were you thinking on the way out there? I was kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing, like, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. 
like I know like my life has completely changed I don't know like what's happening like honestly like I try to picture that that whole ride like it's like 45 minutes to an hour ride out there and it's just like couldn't I have like saved my girl's life couldn't I have done something why did I do that? I don't know right like this is my flesh and blood this is like what I wanted all my life was to be a dad just to have you know kids and they love me, they, you know, all that, and it just nothing, nothing made sense. Right. Like the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like, what the, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So what happened when you got out there? I took Shanann out. Just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. And then... What were the girls doing when you were doing that? Just sent them back to the truck. And then what happened after that? CC was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No? I put the blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Couldn't breathe. No. I put the blanket over her. I didn't want to. No. I strangled her right there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? She's in my desire. Did she understand? Did she know what was going on? She didn't say anything. Same for Bella. Just without a blanket. With the blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. It's like every time I close my eyes, I start to hear her saying, "Daddy, no," and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. You hear that? Sorry, man. Sorry doesn't take anything back to that hit. I know. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you can say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't... You didn't feel like that during I, that? I just didn't. I felt like it was just like an anger with Shanann with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. I mean, kids growing out with growing up without their parents, they I mean, depending on what grandparents or whatever they whoever they grew up with seemed to be fine, but it was just like it was an anger thing. It was just like <laughs> And what were you so angry at Shanann about? Like if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that... Nothing that makes anybody to want to do this. I mean, you could be angry at your spouse like your whole life, but you should never have done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. And I let it get to a point where I never... I mean, I've never been angry before. Like, and this was like the epitome of being angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The epitome of like showing a rage, the epitome of like losing losing your mind. I mean, even like some people in here said, they're like, the heck happened? You must have freaking snapped. I'm like, I just walk away. I'm just like, you know, it's, it's, I don't see it in my mind how it could have, like, you know, I look outside every day, I'm like, what could we be doing right now? Yeah. But, you know, Right now, I'd have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a more than likely a one-month-old son. And a beautiful wife. And just like, right now, it's just me.
I watched that video of you finding out that Shanann was pregnant. You don't seem excited. You seem like kind of in shock Scared. and yeah, like oh fuck. Like well, it's, it's already complicated and now this. Well, it's like uh, when we had talked about it, like a couple weeks. It happened fat like with Bella. It was like we almost gave up mm -hmm. trying. And then she bought me like a supercharger for my car. And then with Cece, it was like we had to try and try and try. And then finally, but with Nico, it was, you know, once or twice. And then like two flares, she's pregnant. Is that mm -hmm. what happened? Hmm. Yes. And it's just like, it was more of like surprise, scared. I'm like, wait, what? It's like, we just, we, just, yeah. we just talked about this. <laughs> like, you know? You know, people have brought up the fact like, oh, she, she was probably pregnant before. Like, you guys even talked about it. I'm just like... No. But like, yeah, it was insanely fast. I give it that. Like, that's the only reason I ever gave that notion, like, even the moment of thought, because it was, like, faster than any other time that she, she'd gotten pregnant. Right. You just didn't seem happy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I haven't, I mean, like, I don't remember the video much. I know she was wearing, like, a Oops, We Did It Again shirt, I think, and I was walking out of my cooler or something. And mm -hmm. I don't remember, like, my actual like reaction like watching the video but like I could see I could see her surprise see her, like uh didn't seem like he was jumping for joy type thing. Yeah, it didn't seem like that. Did you watch the one of the uh, when I found out about Cece? Uh -uh. No. Oh, okay. Is it totally different? Yeah it was Yeah. Yeah it was because uh Bella was in the crib and it had an eviction notice on the Oh yeah I think you crib. told me about it, yeah. I never saw it mm -hmm. though. Yeah, I picked up Bella and spun her around and whatnot. This time it was just me and Shanann and she was in the kitchen. I don't know, like, I don't forget what date it was, maybe like June 3rd or 5th or 7th, I'm not sure like what date it was in the video, but maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe that was going through my head. Is that the potential timing? Does that make sense? I don't remember the video, what day the video was, but I knew like I had kind of met Nikki around like June 1st. Mm -hmm. I knew like the, she told me like afterwards. When you say met her, you mean like went on a date with her? No, no, I didn't go on a date with her until she was in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Just like flirting stuff? Yeah, I mean, there was natural flirting back, back and forth, and I was just like, I just, I knew that like with that video timing, I probably just looked like I was like, felt guilty for even talking like oh it worked. Well, you probably did, right? Yeah. Did you guys fight before you and Shanann? I know you talked about like not really raising your voice and stuff. Was there, because I want to say, didn't a neighbor talk about them fighting and stuff? Yeah, but that was, that was embellished and exaggerated and he retracted that. Oh, he ended yeah, up he, doing yeah, that? He retracted that so. Did you guys ever fight? Did you ever... No, I mean, was, was there any domestic violence in your house? Like, no, like we never, this is strange to us to even have, from her to you. I mean, yeah, she gets no. mad when she's pregnant and grabs a knife or no, like scratches I mean, you or smacks you around or nothing. No, she's never like nothing. Okay, that's what makes all this even more hard to understand from my standpoint. Nothing here is too. Yeah. Did she ever belittle you at all? Did you ever feel that way, maybe? What was that? Did, you, did she ever make you feel like she belittled you or you felt belittled by her? I mean, there's always points, like, in, in a marriage where, like, you know, the dominant person, like, you know, takes control of sure. everything. But, like, you know, I was, my whole life, I just kind of went with the flow. Like, yeah, I never, I never, like, put myself in the center of attention I didn't want to be. Yeah. And I just kind of, I just wanted to be in the back row. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, if she did belittle me, I couldn't pick a point, pick an exact point or time. She never really felt that way. Right? No, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I always knew I was like, you know, the introvert, and she was the, she, right. she took control of most situations. Like when people came over, like you know, I knew what I, <laughs> my role was. <laughs> yeah. Like I watch videos of like like cooking you know or she'd make like power balls or you know or like uh, protein balls or whatever yeah you just don't seem like you want to be in those videos no. like you feel i feel like you were being forced to be in those videos and correct me if i'm wrong but yeah, that's I, what it I, seemed I, like I to hate, me i hated being in videos i hated i mean i did it because for her because right. it was for, for her business and sure. stuff but like it was 
you know, I, I did, I hated just being out yeah. for everybody to see. That's why, like, the whole like the gender reveal thing. I was just like, hmm, I, I didn't want it to be like some live Facebook video. I'm just like, no. <laughs> But like I just I never wanted to be out there. Yeah, I know I'm like. Well, even when she was, because we talk about this a lot, Tammy and I, and Dave. Even when it was, you know, I think it was Florida on some Lavelle or Thrive thing, and she's like, "Here we are," and it's all expenses paid. And oh, I was like, I remember looking at you and thinking, like, he is not into this video right now. No, you don't look into any of the videos. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be either. Yeah. yeah that's not me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I mean, I remember you talking about like she would even post stuff for you, like because oh, yeah. you're technically a salesman too of yeah, was, Lavelle of yeah, Thrive. That, like she put me underneath her, and that like anything like any of my friends or stuff, like anything I do would help her. Right. So it was just you know, I would send her pictures, like like I should I take a picture with your patch. I'm like okay, send it to her, and then she'd make a post about it. She would. She eventually. She was like, "Are right, you going to take more control over like your business and stuff?" I was like, "I don't know what to talk about." Right. Like if I went up to talk about talk to somebody at the mall or at the pool or somebody about this, I just stumble all over my words and just like they'd be like, "Okay, bye." But no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the salesman. Jesus, she's. I mean, she could sell everything you're wearing back to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it. Like, wait, I just paid. Right. For this shirt, I paid twenty bucks for it. Yeah, it's those videos were not me. I just I did it just, just to support her. You know, like she would always say, "Oh." Could you tell her no? Could you say, "I don't want to be in that video," or was that an option? Probably not an option. I mean, it's like you know, she would have been like, "Oh, what? This is to you know help our family. This is for you know to help this and that." You know, so I couldn't have told her no. I mean, it would just it would have made her mad. I would have been like, "No." I would I wouldn't want to start that just because it's for the business it's for the family you know, I was just going to try to help out wherever we can right did that actually make money mm -hmm. so not only just more sales but it actually put money in your guys pocket mm -hmm. okay. and she made probably probably in that last year probably as much as I did on commissions basically I mean I know that's a simplified version of it but yeah I mean it's uh and they don't take taxes out on it so yeah. right that, that was like the good thing, and they paid for your car. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, did they give you an allowance, her an allowance or something mm -hmm. to buy a car? Yep. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're a certain level, like a 12k or above, they give you a car allowance once a month. Hmm. I'm not sure how they how they made money. The owners doing that, but they did. Yeah. Unless there's just like an insane markup on the product, which I probably guess there is. Probably is, yeah. I'm not sure how that much much it costs for them to make it. But. Yeah. Did you feel like a different person wearing those patches? Especially like the the duo, the burn. I, I mean, the, it felt. I mean, like the Apple watches. Like if you look on it, like when it tells you to exercise, it says mm -hmm. I was exercising like all day. Cause my heart rate was like up. Oh. Just from those patches. Was it full of caffeine or what? Uh, they just have something. They had something. On them. I mean, I had the black label ones, the the longer black ones. They, those had caffeine in them, but it never had that effect. I mean, the duo burn ones, the ones that are more of like the fat loss type, it was, I could, it felt like I was working out all day, even were though I wasn't. Oh, were you tired? I mean, I know at some points, I, I mean, even Nikki said that, like, you know, I'd fall asleep on the couch, oh. on her couch, while I was talking to her, and then, like, <laughs> pick back up like I was, like, I never knew I fell asleep. Mm. I don't know if it's like an insomnia thing or what, but like I was, I wasn't sleeping much. You had a lot going on then. Yeah. Yeah, but those were the only patches I really felt like a real big difference on, just because it felt like, I felt like I was working out all day. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like they changed your personality or anything like that, though, or do you? I don't. I don't really know. I know that I just felt different on those than any other patch. It was, but like I could just go longer and longer each day, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure like if that was probably that was probably a bad thing because I I don't think I was probably sleeping more than three hours a night. So would you stay at when Shan was gone? Would you stay with Nikki and then go home for like to get ready? To work? Yeah, I just wake up at like four four thirty, 
go home and get ready for work and leave. And I just work out when I got back home. Mm-hmm. What were the conversations with Nikki as far as um, at some point you guys were talking about her helping you find an apartment? So what did you guys talk about as far as your future together? That didn't really happen until like I got back from back from the beach. So I told her like I you know I, I lied to her like hey you know like I don't like I had talked to Shannon about getting a separation. And that talk hadn't happened yet. No, I okay. mean it, it kind of like not, I mean, she knew something was going on. And yeah. she knew we we weren't sleeping in the same room, and yeah. then she she you know she even mentioned the fact like hey you know you know. Colorado's 50, 50 state or something like that, and which I was like, okay, well, I guess you looked it up. But you know that actual talk I hadn't like actually okay. happened. I was just like, I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. And so in, in conversations with Nikki, and I get it. I mean, you're, you're telling her like the progress toward the divorce is a little bit more than it was. Mm-hmm. And then so what were you guys planning? So it was more of like um, she's going to help me find a apartment that was. Affordable. That's mm-hmm. kind of just around like Brighton, or maybe just close to work, like another Fort Lupton or something around there. That's yeah. kind of like where my area was. Mm-hmm. Did you talk about moving in with her? She did. She didn't want that. She didn't want that. Would no. you have done that if she would have been yeah. cool with that? Uh, I, I've been a little too soon. I would have thought there was just you know we only been really seeing each other like almost like a month or. And just talking about two months, that would really. She she called her house like her apartment like her. I don't know, like her, kind of like a shield or kind of like her. Well, she had another word for it, but like her safe place. Yeah, like a safe mm-hmm. place or something like that. And she said, like you know people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was that was fine, like her dog liked me and everything. Like she was like, hey, you know. Should be belong here, type thing. Yeah. Okay. So. so you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you? I mean, there was some discussion there with Ann yeah, Meadows. She, and yeah, she had sent an email about to Ann about like how we would go about like selling the house. Yeah. And I think Ann told her about you know get like Ann was always about getting pre-approved. Just like you know like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house, so it's like you know much faster. Yeah, so you just quickly transition mm-hmm. from one to the other. Okay. When did that happen? Remember? I think it was either right before we left. No, that had to have been like first week of August, somewhere around there. I think she may have contacted her. Okay. So the plan was maybe to buy a house. I think you told me in Brighton, you think about buying a house in Brighton. Yeah, just like yeah, she Monday. liked that, uh, that Adams 12 mm-hmm. school system or something. Yeah. So. Okay. I think, I think that's what Brighton is. Adams. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you called that the school that day on Monday? I, I was freaking out. I didn't know. Like, like I was thinking in my head, like what I just did, what I just done, and I didn't know. Like, it was it was even, it was stupid to do anything. Just I mean, to call the school, to call Ann, to call anybody. I mean, it, I mean, they were right to be, you know suspicious about anything look because I knew I, I probably sounded eccentric on the phone and out of out of sorts and just you know I can only, only you know, I don't even know what they were thinking they heard me I think they thought I was weird but I don't know how you would not sound weird you know like you said so so are you Hundred percent sure the girls were still around and alive when you drove out. Okay, so that's completely accurate. There's nothing, nothing else about that. They, they got in the truck. Okay. Where did the blanket go? It's either it's probably in the trash can or something. I think. In the trash? I, it wasn't like it was still in my truck. Okay. We thought we saw some GPS where you had stopped by near construction, a uh, roll-off dumpster. Is that true, or I think yeah, I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. So was that would have been on the way back to the house, 
Yeah. In my neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kunab was there. Okay. Was it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there because, like, in case we had like a spill or something. Oh. Yeah. If you ever get crude oil on you, you know. Yeah, I, had, I like I have like new, I have like two pairs of boots, uh, all kinds of different stuff in there, just because like, like just one time I had to pick up a spill and I had defrost on, and I had like a headache for like two weeks because oh. like the crude oil that comes with it. That. So I always have something in there. So where did you keep them after you took them off? Like, did you just change out there into your new other? Uh, so I like I, I dumped my clothes in that dumpster. But that wasn't that on the way back. When you were coming, like you'd already worked the whole day, yeah. right? Yeah, I'd work. No. Well, I'd work like till like eleven or so. Eleven. Yeah. So that was back when, well, when Nicole Atkinson. Yeah, no, when she was at yeah, when she my house, the yeah. doorbell is right. when I knew from out at the house. Right. Did you think right then, like, oh fuck, like here we go, or what were you thinking? About? I, I didn't know why she was there. I was like, I didn't know, like maybe, maybe she had an appointment or something with Shanae. I, I didn't know. What did you think, like, that day, like, what you were going to say? Like, what was your plan? Were you just going to go home and be, like, report to the police that your family's gone, I, or? I had, like, once, like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Like, after everything, like, I mean, I don't even know how I was even acting even normal to people that I was around. Because when, like, Troy and Cody and Chad and Melissa and all them, like, you know, when they showed up on the site, I don't even know how I was even being somewhat even coherent what I was saying, but apparently that understood me. So I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, I, this wasn't like something like some criminal minds type. Like well thought yeah, out. Yeah, thing. it wasn't nothing like that. It was minute by minute at that point. Yeah, it was, I had no idea what, what was going to happen. So once the girls were, were gone, um, was it also just a minute by minute thing as far as the oil tanks? Yeah, I, I didn't know what what to do. I mean, I, just thinking about an oil tank just makes me want to fill up. Mm. And was that just because it was in front of you and there it was and just presented itself? It wasn't a, a plan beforehand? Okay. Was there any reason why the separate ones? No, it's, just, it's like you said, it was like a going up, just going up the stairs, and it didn't. You no, know, like what Frank said, it's like I was trying to separate everybody. That's not. No. no yeah. I didn't want to separate anybody. What was the reason? I, I, I can't even tell you. It's like, like I said, like something else was in control of what I was doing, and it was like I was doing something I never thought I would ever do in my life. Did you think there would be less chance of someone finding them if they were in separate tanks, or? I don't know. Sounds like a little bit. Yeah. Oh. No, I, I didn't. I, whatever, whatever my reasoning was in my head that day, it wasn't, it wasn't sound. It was nothing was right. And you don't even remember thinking about it? No, it was just like, it was like, like a reaction of something that I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. Can you talk you? about the trash bags? Do you remember that? Oh, with uh, there were two. Oh, with okay. Yeah, I was trying to because like the sheet kept. I didn't want to like when when I was putting the one coherent I guess thing I had like I didn't want the girls looking at Shanann while they were in the back seat. Mm. So what'd you do? a trash bag on one end and on her feet and on her head so they didn't have to see. Okay. And they were just too little to kind of figure out, right? Yeah, they didn't have to Okay. That's good. I just know, like, when I was driving up there, I mean, you know, they were just, you know, sitting there just, you know, kind of asleep or kind of just, like, you know, holding on to each other, laying in each other's laps. You know, I, I didn't. Do you remember having any thoughts or thinking about why not just putting them all together with your name? Honestly, honestly, it was just happening so fast. I had no I, time to really have a thought that was my own. Okay. 
but I wasn't like dutifully trying to separate anybody yeah. passing away, trying to keep anybody separate. I know everything, everything, you know, Frank Sandy and Frankie said, you know, like, I, I, I don't hold it against them. I mean, they can hate me for, they, they have a right to hate me for the rest of their lives. They don't hate they, you. you know, in fact, while we're on the subject, I, I speak with them weekly, and, and I told them that we were going to come here, and then hopefully they would speak with us. And they told me to tell you, understandably, they're, you know, they're devastated. Um, but they actually said that they, they love you. They still love you. And and Sandy explained it, you know, he's he's our son, son in law for eight years. I can't just turn that off. So they don't hate you. They don't. That's so, amazing to hear that. Yeah, well and I can tell you Sandy was 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 the one that was most resistant to penalties in this case. And she said that she told me that from the very beginning. Um, but she didn't want that. It's God's decision. It's not her decision. And then she told me that even then. So it's not just a one-time thing that, that she has said it to me. Um, it's been over the whole course of, of the event. So um, that's probably one of the most honest things someone's ever told me. You know? So that's it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, faith is, uh, you know, she's obviously a believer. So am I. I get it. So I understand it. You know? so, that's amazing to hear that. Yeah. Good people. I would, have, I would have figured they would have hated me for... They don't. I mean, yeah, anybody would think that. I certainly would have, but I, I have to admit I was surprised. Really taken back by that, but they certainly don't. So. What did they say when they knew you were coming out here? Um, they just, they said they want to know, you know, details, because they need closure. And that's really all they want, and, and they want to keep it private. And I said, well, absolutely. That's, you know, we'll talk to them about what you told us, and just so they can put it past them, because you know, they're having a hard time dealing with it and trying to get past it all. And, um, and I think that may help, just to, you know, just to know. Closures, you know. I mean, my parents still think, you know, like, I, I told them I pled guilty for a reason. Right. right. And like I told it to them when they had that uh, video video phone thing in Colorado the day before, like I played guilty, but I played guilty for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't just, you know, I knew other people were watching. So I didn't just go in and like, just say anything. But, mm -hmm. Like, they seemed to take it and be okay. Mm -hmm. and what made you do that, Chris? What made you plead guilty? I didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want them to go through this for two or four years. I didn't want my attorneys to lie for me for four for two or four years. Like they, I mean, they would have done anything I told them to do. Sure. That's what they're. I don't see how they can do that. And like you know, that's what attorneys do. You know, like they take their defendant and they say hey, like what happened. Okay, we'll go with that story. Like I told them everything I just told you guys, and it's just like. They just and they got together like, well, if you know, if if, if they ever wanted, they ever offered a plea deal, would you ever want to like just plead guilty to? I'm like, yeah, I mean, if, it, if we can end this, end it. Like I was like in September, I told them that. Really? Yeah, they like, but you know, it was way too early, and the prosecution was still doing mm -hmm. their. Yeah. This guy used to grabbing evidence and all kind of stuff, and that wasn't even on really on the table. So I think it was. An, like around Halloween, mm -hmm. I think that's when the, the prosecution went to went to Frank and Sandy and Frankie's house. And it's talking like, if we can end this, would you be open to that? And that's when like, you know, like the whole death penalty and everything, all that right. conversation happened. And uh, I guess they were surprised that it, it, it would just be over. Yeah. And we were all in shock, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that was like, it's like we were going 100 miles an hour, and then we just hit a brick wall. Like, that's what it felt like to all of us. So, I mean, obviously you had more time to yeah, I mean, I, I contemplate mean, it than us. Yeah, I, was, I, I mean, I told, I told John and Kate and Sophia and everybody, Amy, hey, it's like, if we can just stop this. And, like, I know it's, you know, everybody's telling me to fight, fight this. You know, there's no, like, 
there's like they're about saying there's like not enough evidence to such and this this and that. And I'm just like no, I'm just like, this needs to end. Like I don't want people to have to because for Frank and everybody to have to fly back to Colorado every single time and get reminded of this. Like I'm not sure it's never going to go away, but to actually have to come and talk about it, have other people talk about it, have you know. All three of you get on the witness on the witness stand and say you know what they saw, yeah. what they've seen, you know, what what they they heard on tapes and everything like that. It's just like I don't want people to live that over and over and over again for for years. Like if I could just end this for everybody and then like if there's any closure at all, they could you know they could start then instead of like 2022. But you know, like you know everything just like. So I know it'd only get worse for everybody. So did it have anything to do with you not having the death penalty? No, like I mean honestly, like when I was sitting in that cell, I felt like I should die. I mean, I, I was listening to everybody telling me like, hey, if you do this and this, you can hang yourself in that cell. You could do this and that. You could, they were like telling you stuff. Yeah, you, they, could you could drown yourself in the toilet if you wanted to fill your toilet bowl up or something like that. It was. Um, they've been there a bunch of times. And like, you know, I was at one point I was listening to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just like, you know, you know, I just felt like maybe I could, maybe there's a different purpose for me somewhere. You know, maybe it's here. I don't know. Like I prayed to God every day that He would move me away from Colorado, like he move me away from like the DOC there, because I just knew like cause they were saying there was a hit on me. <laughs> they said if I was going to a DOC in Colorado, like I'd last a week and I'd be dead. Because like the gangs and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. so like I just felt like God moved me here for a reason. And I, you know, hopefully I can help people that way. But like I didn't want my family, I didn't want my family, all of our friends, like you know, having to go through that. Because after a while, I knew it was like this stuff was everywhere, and I knew like all her thrive friends, everybody. It was just like it would just, it would just broke just with that hole in their heart just a little bit bigger every time. I didn't want that. I knew it would have gotten worse. I didn't want it, I didn't want it to get any worse than it already was. Did you ever think about well, you know, it could be very believable what I told him, it could be very believable that Shanann did, you know, end the girls. And so maybe if I tried to convince people that, maybe if I fought with my attorneys on that, maybe I could lessen it somehow. Did you ever think about that? Honestly I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wondered. I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. So what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. I didn't like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked shit in. Mm -hmm. I knew it was like, you know, I mean, through all this, like I got letters from some of my friends that even said, you know, you know, when we went over to your house, we could see, you know, Shane was more of a dominant personality and more of like, you know, you know, you're always helping with the kids and everything. Just, you know, you're a great dad and everything. We could see, you know, a couple things that I never saw or, you know, whatnot. And even my best friend Mark even said, you know, there was always, you know, something, you know, I didn't really get it with Shanann. I was like, nobody ever told me any of this stuff, but okay. But yeah, it was, I never thought about that story. And, you know, that's what my attorneys were going with. Yeah. And then like, I think it was probably the second week I told them like what had really happened. What did they say after that? They were quiet. They were writing it down. They were, they, did, they said they wouldn't judge me. So I told them. I told them everything that happened. And they, you know, appreciated, like, I guess, you know, most of the time, you know, they're, or their you know, defense don't like tell them actually what happened. No. Yeah. They just, you know, tell them, all right, get get me out, get me out of here. And this is what happened. But I told them what happened. I, I didn't want them going, if this was going to go like anywhere in courts, I didn't want them to be under a false pretense and like get surprised. So I know like there was probably things that you guys probably knew that. I mean, if I if I just kept if I lied to them and just tell them not that this is what happened, that it would have like made them look you know foolish and 
stupid and just like, you know, unprepared. And I'm just like, this is what happened. And they, you know, they appreciated me telling me, telling them that. So now they, they would be prepared. And that's when they were saying like, you know, if, if it was ever, you know, if we ever went to them, the prosecution would say, if we could end this, would I be open to it? I'm like, if it could end, let's end it. I know there was like, um, wasn't her phone found on the couch or in between the couch cushions? Like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it yeah, in there? I, I, I why, was, why did you do that? I, I don't know what was going on that morning. Like, even like, you know, her watch, her phone, like, I, you know, if I was actually like, if I'd planned this, I would probably just take it out to the field, or probably, you know? Mm -hmm. but, what you about know, her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you know, maybe she wanted. Maybe she actually really wanted a divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. Just put it there on the counter. She took it off? Or did I, you I, take I, it off? I took it off. Okay. Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. So the phone and her watch and the couch, was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. Yeah, because I think uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? So the phone and the watch. Yeah. I think I threw the therapy book she wanted me to read in the trash. I don't know. That was that morning? I probably I think so. Were you trying to make it look like she threw it in the trash? I don't I don't know. I just like, oh. I I just didn't think it was nothing was ever gonna work again. So it was I didn't know what was going on. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door opened. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So there was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426 or something. And, and the garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps, I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so like the basement I'm not sure I mean the only thing I really have down there is my workout my the bench press workout. do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything did you think about well maybe I'll take her out that way or mm -hmm. is it a walkout basement no it no. wasn't at your house okay no, it's like a garden level basement so okay but now I don't remember really I'm plus uh, I don't think I worked out that morning like, were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like, did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely I packed the lunch and everything. Did all that, but I don't, I don't remember what, about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there, that time. Yeah, you got trash bags from there? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe there wasn't any in the garage, and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. So there was a roll in your truck? There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement, maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Graham? Um, one of the more kind of poignant or tender moments in all of this was um, seeing you with your dad when he came in. Um, what was it like when you picked him up at the airport? It was it was very strange. It was it was kind of like I almost knew this probably the last time I'd ever see him on the outside. In my head, I knew that. Yeah. What'd you guys talk about? Honestly, like he just wanted to talk about sports. He just wanted. Yeah. He just like you know he. Didn't, He's always kind of like, you know, distance himself from like, uh, like a problem type thing. Like, you know, when, like if there was ever an issue or anything like that, he always want to talk about like, just bring up, like when I would try to get him to quit smoking, like all the time, like this is after like I graduated high school and whatnot, he would. Are you talking about cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he would always like just change stuff. He'd be like, oh, you never know what happened in the race, uh, football, just something. I mean, he he just never wanted like, you know, he said, okay, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. And he was, boom, something else. And you know, I just kind of felt like it was kind of like that, you know, like he, he asked, maybe asked like a few questions, like, you know, do you know where they're at? And do, do, do you think, you know, 
think you know where they're at or anything like that. I just, you know, tell them no. And then, like, start talking about, just want to talk about sports and just, like, normal, normal things. Just kind of, I'm not sure if he maybe knew anything, you know, maybe he kind of figured out something maybe happened. Just wanted to talk to me as, as a son. Is it possible he saw that you were in a stressful situation and wanted to do what he always did? Make yeah. things comfortable. I think that was a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I bet you picked up a lot of that from him. Yeah, because uh, I mean, stressful situations, like, I I mean, the gray hair didn't show it, but, like, I, I try not to be in stress. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like, you know, I worked on cars, there was a lot of stress. Because it's always, you know, it's on commission, you know, you get paid for what you do, not by showing up. So, you know, then Darko was a little less stressful, because, you know, I got paid just to be there. Mm -hmm. Was your dad's marriage like yours and Shanann's marriage as far as like your dad was the more passive one and uh, your mom was the yeah, more dominant? mom was always the more aggressive one. Was she like Shanann in a way? I mean, were you attracted to Shanann because she was kind of like how your mom and dad's relationship was? or It was like, you know, it, it almost mirrored like her mom and dad's relationship, honestly, because her dad's like my dad. They're both like kind of calm, cool, mm -hmm. like, right? I could see that, yeah. And her mom is very Sandy rules that roost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. very. And it's just like, you know, I, I, I kind of related it to that. Mm -hmm. It's like her mom always said, like, she she always told Shanann that she would marry somebody that was kind of like her dad. And I felt like I was kind of like her dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't like, like, you know, I couldn't build a lot of things he could, but you know, our personalities were kind of like, you know, I was always, you know. I think he really liked me the first time he met me because, like, I was um, helping helping Shan with this. Uh, she had got this car from the dealership that she would work that she worked at, and she was driving around and felt like you know the wheels might fall off. And uh, I pulled over where her dad was, and I was I got underneath it, jacked it up, and I was like you know trying to fix everything. He's saying like any other guy she'd ever dated would have just like stood by and watched me do it. And so like that's when he really like kind of. Kind of like me. Like to you. Yeah, it's just like I was. I was always wanting to help people, not to, not to hurt anybody. So. Well, and you helped her all through her lupus, and you're at the colonoscopy, yeah. and you're jacking up the car. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, just, I mean, any time she had an issue with like the car at the Dirty South Customs, and like I would just go out to work, mm -hmm. and see what I could do with it. You know, I would just you know, do whatever I could to help. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the reasons Frank and Sandy work so well is because Frank lets Sandy be Sandy. Yeah, and they probably both saw in you <laughs> that you let Shanann be Shanann. Yeah, I just like you know I didn't I didn't try to change her. Right, like I just let her be you know who she is. Yeah, she's like you know she's gung ho. She's yeah. you know, she knows what she wants. She's gonna go get it. Yeah, and I didn't say hey you know you can't do that. And that's what her first husband did. Yeah, she he controlled everything. He he tried to be Sandy, and it didn't work. And she and she turned into almost like me. She was like. She just kind of like, like played back and just kind of like let him do what he was doing. But then I think she learned after that that she could just be herself. And then with me, she could definitely be herself. Yeah. So that's how it worked. So do you think your dad had any inkling? Because I'm trying to remember the timing. He showed up when you were still walking around. You weren't in any trouble yet when Ronnie came in. Yeah, I, was, I had met with you the night before, mm -hmm. for like a, three or four hours. And then I was at Nick and Amanda's house, okay. and, out there, and that's when I went to go pick him up. Okay. And you picked him up, it was early that morning, right? Yeah, it was like 10.30, I think, when his flight came in. Okay. And then so from there, you, I, you guys probably drove home and then to the police station. Yep. And the, the talks there were no type of confession from you. Okay. No, it was like, he, just, he was just going to wait. Okay. I told him, like, you know, if you're hungry, there's, like, that barbecue joint down the street, yeah. and, like, you know, it's good, and just, you know, he told me he never left. He didn't. I wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was faithful. He was... Yeah, was... I mean, I don't know how he lasted that long without food. We yeah. ended up giving him food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, uh, he was great. Um, and the reason I ask is because when I look back and watch the video, um, now knowing what I know after talking to you today, I can see how genuine he was. But I just didn't know if you guys had come up with some sort of plan. Okay. No, no you, you, we never talked about it. Okay. About that. Yeah. I don't, I, if I had told him anything, he would have probably just told me to just tell him right away. I think you're right. 
Like, he would have still loved me either, either way, but he would have told me, you need to tell him, yeah. like, right now. Yeah. yeah. Like, you don't need, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be there for 14, or how long it was, like, 10 hours, how long it was that You were there a long time. Yeah, but it was, he would have told me just to say, just, just to tell you. Yeah. Did you know walking in there that you were going to tell us? Or did you think? I didn't, I mean, I knew there was a reason you brought me back in. I know, well, for the... Um, what did you think about the polygraph? That was horrible. <laughs> Why do you say that? I don't know how you do that. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> Tammy's a torturer. I am not! No, like, I mean, Tell you, me. you answered, oh, you, know, you asked me questions for like, well, like, three or four hours beforehand, and then you do the polygraph, and it's like you just break down somebody's brain to where, like, too like, much or too what? Much. <laughs> Jello, and it's just like I, I know it's it's you guys have a job and you have a plan and that's you executed it. But she's thorough, right? There's no. just no there's yeah. no way to get out of there without the truth. No, I mean I I kind of knew like where because right when I he asked me about like Saturday night, the when I told your brother walking, I was like, man, she was like going through it. I was like, I. <laughs> well, we did know, we found out about Nikki right before the polygraph. Uh, I, I figured that out after after with meeting with John and everybody that yeah. she had met with somebody from the CBI. Mm -hmm. like, yes. the, like on the 14th or the 15th, I was just like, hey, they were talking. Oh, okay. So you already knew. So, but. I mean, I didn't know how extensive it was, but yes, we, we knew. Yeah, I, I mean, I. Walking in there that day, just walking into that room, I knew I wasn't walking out. Yeah. Just, just the feeling I had walking in that room. Yeah. Just seeing, all, I mean, I don't remember if the polygraph stuff was already in there. I think it was. It but, was, yeah. But it was, I knew it. I, I just knew. felt, I just feel like sometimes when people, you know, do do the bad thing and they stay, like, some part of me thinks, well, I think they're here because they really want to tell us what happened. Because it's not normal that you want to keep all that in. Like, that just kills people on the inside. And I could tell it was killing you that day. Yeah, I mean, it was just like that. The 13th, when I slept in the house, I didn't, nothing. I didn't know anything. I slept maybe like two hours because I just finally just got so tired. I just fell asleep. I turned out, I had every light on. I didn't, I, nothing felt right. What were you thinking about during your media interviews? I didn't want to do it. Why did you do it? Did you feel like you had to do it? I felt like, you know, they would have just kept knocking on my door yeah. if until I answered it. And, like, I didn't even set it up, but, you know, Nicole Atkinson set it up. She told me, hey, Fox is going to... Did she the one who set it up? She said, Fox is going to be at your house at 10.30. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay. And, you know, I think I even called, even called you about it. Like, what do you recommend that I do? And he's like, it's kind of up to you. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And I called one of her friends, you know, what should I do? And uh, she said, I probably wouldn't do it, but I just felt like, you know, I, I don't even want to know what I said, what I looked like on there, because I knew it. Some people said it just, it just made it look even worse after the fact, but. It, it didn't look good. I, I mean, obviously we can't say, oh, we knew right then he was lying, but I think we all watched it together and went, this might be bad. Yeah, I, mean, I had that feeling after I watched it. So I could kind of see it in your face. It's like I was just lying to more and more people, and it was just like, I just... Do you have internet access here? No. So you don't... Just don't get into that trap of putting them watching what all trap? that. Oh. The, the social media trap and all that. No, they don't, they don't let you have social media here. Yeah. Like, um, I think some of the GP guys are getting like these little like tablets or something that are like, you know, the size of like a older iPhone or something. Mm. But I think they can use like email, but I'm not, sh I'm not sure about like social media. No, no, definitely no social media, but like, yeah. I'm not sure about internet or not. But mm -hmm. this place is kind of like, you know, a dead zone pie for phones anyways. I would think. I don't know. We're getting service, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we would. We are here. <laughs> yeah, right in this, this room. Maybe this is kind of like a hub of yeah. computers. <laughs> yeah, that's this true. is the spot. Yeah, it's a computer room. You would hope they'd have some. Did you talk to um, Nikki afterwards? After all this happened. On the thirteenth. On the yeah, thirteenth and the fourteenth. 
What how, what was that conversation like? It was the 13th. It's kind of like, you know, it was more text and then maybe a phone call, like a, a phone call. And then she was just, she thought maybe she had like took off with the kids. Like just, you know, because I, I was telling her I didn't know where they were and all that. And then the 14th, it, she kind of like, I think she kind of thought something may have happened because they hadn't come back. Why do you say that she might have thought that? Her, you know, she kept asking me, like, some weird questions. Like, she kept asking, like, questions that only I would know, but she was testing to see if, like, it was actually me on the phone. Like, what do you mean? Like, she would ask, like, you know, like, what's my dog's name? Or, like, what do I, like, uh, what yoga studio do I go to? Or something like that. And just like, oh. hmm. Like, I just answer her, like, like I'm, and then like another thing about I'm sure I'm not sure if this is you. I'm just like okay. I don't is this who texts or is this who calls? Text. Oh okay. So she wasn't hearing your voice. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible she thought you'd been arrested and we were on the phone? One, either Shanann had my phone or somebody else had her oh, phone. Right. Or like maybe you know, maybe it was maybe she thought it was. The, <laughs> well, hopefully Shanann would know all the answers to those questions, right? No, 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 this is uh, Nikki asking me. Yeah, but okay. she, if she's asking you your name of your dog and what yoga studio and yeah. like wouldn't she, well, she, she Maybe she thought, you know, maybe I was with Shannon that she was just trying to find out who she was. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like some, some of the some of the conversations like on the 14th got a little weird. I think that's when she met with CBI or something or FBI. I'm not sure who she met with first. So she talked to you after she met with? No. Nope. Oh, she that was like she had told me like this is the last time you'll probably hear from me. I'm going to stay at my friend Jim's place. All this is all going on. I should not contact her until this is this is done. She told me to delete everything. And I didn't delete everything. I just, just okay. I'm not sure why I didn't delete everything, but it probably helped you guys out a little bit. But she told you to, to delete everything. Delete all conversations. Did all she tell you why? said delete it. Yeah. Which I don't think you can ever delete a text message. We're pretty good at getting deleted text messages. Yeah. Did uh, when your dad came in, one of the first things you guys talked about, he said, you know, kinda of quietly I cheated on her, I cheated on Shannon or something. Your dad didn't know until that time? No, they had, when I was in North Carolina August sixth when I spent most of the day with my parents and my sister and everybody, you know, they had, uh, I had told them like something like, you know, this, I don't think this is going to work. Like, for it, with what happened with the, the nuts and everything, and yeah. they're not being able to see the kids, they're yeah. like, you know, this is the first time they had talked to me, and pretty much. To oh, because you went three weeks or something, right? Yeah, because Shanann had told me to call them while I was in at the beach just to smooth everything out, because she was like, all right, whatever's going on in your head, you need to fix this. But she didn't want me to, she didn't want the kids to see him, she didn't want to see him. And then, like, when I did see him on August 6th, it was after I went and saw my grandmother. She's in a, in a nursing home. And um, she still wouldn't let wouldn't go see my parents or anybody with the kids. So I just told her to leave me there, and my dad could pick me up and, you know, spent the whole day there. Mm -hmm. I just, and they, they, they were, you know, they said they want to see the kids. They just don't know if they could ever, like, you know, just forgive Shan for, Everything that happened that day, I guess, I mean, I'm not sure, like, everything that was said that day when they had that argument, but apparently it was, like, a knockdown, drag out, like, bomb that went off in there. Pretty yeah. hurtful things. Yeah, I'm guessing so. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they just don't know, like, if they could ever forgive her or not. And I just, like, I I never told them about, like, you know, cheating on, cheating on her. Like, they, they even asked me, is there somebody else? Oh, did they really? Yeah. So I, they could kind of sense maybe something was going on? Yeah, because Nikki was texting the entire time I was over there. Oh. Like, they could kind of see, like, I was texting somebody. Mm -hmm. But it was like, they kind of, maybe they think, maybe they kind of knew. Like, even, like, when I was in San Diego talking to my friend Mark, I told him about Nikki. But I didn't tell him, like, I was going to meet up with her. Okay. I told, I told him that, you know, I was trying to, like, I should have just told him right then. Maybe that would have helped me. I know maybe he had he had an instance where there was some girl coming after him and she he she was engaged and he ended up getting with her and then they had, were together and then she cheated on him. 
Is this before he was married or during? Uh, it was after. Okay. But like, he could've, you know, helped me, but I just, you know, I never told him the whole thing. That, you know, it was a lot further along than I, than I wanted it to be. That's interesting yeah. to think about, right? His dad could've given him some good advice. Uh, yeah, everybody. Oh, this is my friend Mark. Oh, oh, oh I'm no. sorry. Okay. Yeah. When I was in San Diego. Oh, I gotcha. So you think he told Mark about that and hoping that he maybe questioned you about it? Or was I was, like, I was, I was, because, you know, Mark, my best friend, you know, I grew up with him since I was like eight, nine years old. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, he had been married before and it didn't work out. I guess they were stationed together or something, like, over in Korea. And, uh, I was, actually, just kind of just came out with, like, the whole, the whole story. Like, you know, like, I just told him my daughter was this girl at work that, you know, I've been talking to, but I didn't you know I'm just, you know, I'm just, just, just distancing myself from her, yeah. but that wasn't the case. Yeah. I was just letting it, you know, exponentially get worse. Right. And if I had told him, like, hey, you know, yeah. he would have been like, whoa, man, like, all right, take a step back and look. Yeah. Right. And, like, don't, like, fall into that trap, being you're going to be alone for five weeks. Right. And there's, there's times I wish, you know, like, maybe Shannon didn't have to go away for five weeks. Maybe we all just went for one week. Nothing would have ever happened. It's only, I mean, five weeks alone, that's the only reason really that was even almost even allowed to happen. There are quite a few people who would tell us and who do tell us you need to look into Nikki more, Nikki Kissinger. All the way from the extreme end of things being Nikki's the one who ordered the hit. She was there, I'm in the basement. She was she there. Was, yeah. You know, so the, the extreme is. She's the one who told Chris to do it. She's the real problem. All the way, that's the extreme side, and then all the way to, well, there were these texts where she was infatuated, she was in love, she was saying how good Chris was in the sack, and maybe we should look at her more. You know, what would you say to those people? Like, you know, she, she had her moments where I had to talk her, like, off a ledge kind of deal. What does that mean? It's like, she, I guess after the fact, there was, like, videos of her that she was, like, recording herself because she was, like, bipolar or something. I never knew that. But there, it's like, and she would get worked up about nothing. She would just like, she came to my house once, because I think it was like July, July 4th, I, I didn't have to work that day. So I didn't like get up at like, you know, four o'clock and go home. Mm -hmm. And Shannon called me like 10 times in a row. And I didn't hear it because I was asleep. And I was just like, and she was pissed. Shannon was, was pissed. Shannon was pissed. And like I called her on outside, like, where are you at? Like, what? Are you, like, you? Like, I was like, I didn't have to work today. It's like, you called me at like, you know, five thirty. It's like, my well, kids want to talk to you at seven thirty. I'm like, like I was sleeping. She's like, and she just like, you know, screw you. Like, you know, like I don't know where you're at. And I'm phone. And I went back inside. Something like, I gotta go. And she was just like, okay. Then you come back. I'm like, probably not. So wait a minute, you kind of lost me there. Were you at Nikki's place when yeah. Shanann called you? Yeah. Okay, and so you were sleeping in her bed. Yeah, because I wasn't going to work that day, because I, I, I didn't have to that day. Mm -hmm. okay. The first holiday I ran off, and you know, she, Shanann was pissed, and you know, I kind of pissed Nikki off too that I just, that I left, but I think that's when she, uh, I called Nikki later, and she was like, you know, she kind of realized that, you know, she'd always be like, you know, the second, you know, second she said second bill. And because that's how I, I would come back that day. Just, you know, I, I don't want to be anywhere else when Shannon calls. She was already pissed. So yeah. it was stuff like that where she would really, like, she would go, she, she said she would go on, like, uh, websites and look at, like, will a relationship work with somebody? Like, will a mistress work? With, will a mistress turn into a relationship? That's what Nikki was looking at? Yeah. She would tell you that or you she heard told that? Me that? Okay. Yeah, she said that she would go on websites and look at stuff like that. Just to, I was like, why do you even look at stuff like that? She's like, I just want to see what other people have experienced. But like, so that confuses me though, because I thought earlier you were saying she thought you were heading toward a divorce. So why was she looking at herself as this a mistress? Was, this was later on. Oh. Like, okay. you know, in, in August, like okay. the first week of August, when I told her like, you know, I had to have that talk with her about separation. Uh huh. That's when like she would start looking at like apartments and stuff. But like during our July relationship type thing there. Oh, I see. That's when she was looking up like, you know, you know, it will actually work. Okay. She well, told she told her friend Brittany 
about it, I guess, and Brittany told her not to do it, but she said she'd already made a decision. Okay. And so, are those people absolutely wrong about Nikki? She wasn't asking you to get rid of your family? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And no part of any of this was because she put it in your head or asked you to? Or no, she never, I mean, this whole, this whole relationship contributed to it. Sure. But she never, it never, she okay. didn't want me to. I mean, was it ever like, I wish she didn't have kids, I want to have, you know, kids of my own with you? Like uh, She wants, I mean, she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she said that, you know, at one point she said, I'd like to give you a son. What, did she know that Shanann was pregnant with a boy? No. Did she know Shanann was pregnant? No. And why is that? You just didn't tell her? I didn't tell her. Like, because we had met. But Shanann put that on Facebook. That's, that's, like, that's how did she I, not see that? I don't know. Maybe she didn't. She just didn't wait for me to tell her or she put it on her head. Can I ask you a question? A lot of people think you named Nico after Nikki. So what was that? Nico was actually named that Shanann liked. Okay. Shanann thought of that one? Yeah, I actually, I wanted to spell it like N-E-K-O. I thought it was like Nico that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But she said N-I-C-O. And I thought it was like, something like Nico or something. Okay. I guess Nico is, is more of like an Italian name. Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and like, she did leave for, you know, my middle name and my dad and all that. But like, Nico okay. is like, that's a name that she always liked. Okay. Did she name all the kids? She named Bella and Celeste? Yeah, Bella, because so Italian means beautiful. Marie is mom's middle name. Celeste is her grandmother's name. Catherine's Shannon's middle name. Did you have any input in their names? I just don't know, I liked them. I was like I was like if we have oh, like if we had a third child, you know, I was gonna maybe we could have like Lee in the middle name, but you know, like, you know I knew like the girls' names, it was, you know, I, I love those names. So I was like that's cool. Mm -hmm. Especially like with the, you know, you have little nicknames for him, you know, like Bell and Bellavine and CC, obviously. It's so, good, but yeah, Nico was. Yeah, it was. Okay. Can we go back to the house on the 13th? So, um, at one point, right when you got back there, and Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there, mm -hmm. and then you went in the house and you were for about a minute or so before you let everybody in. Do you remember what you were doing in there at that time? No, I was. So I went into the garage, right, and then I ran around and I opened the front door. Yeah, opened the front door for did everybody come in through the garage or the front door. Everybody came through the front door. Yeah, so I came in, I went in through there, and I came in, opened the front door, and I ran upstairs. And I just was like, I, I was looking around. Okay, was that that's after everybody? Did you go around the house at all before you opened the front door? No, no I, didn't, oh. I didn't run around the house. I stayed down on the bottom, okay. on the bottom floor, and then yeah. went and opened the door. Yeah. Okay. And I ran upstairs and everybody else. And that's when Nicole's, Nicole's son mm -hmm. was on the phone and I was going from acting like I was walking through the house. Yeah. She didn't have her bra on. Was that normal that she would sleep in her bra? Mm. Every once in a while. I mean, she just got home from the plane, so she didn't even take off her, her makeup or anything. Maybe she was just that tired. But normally, Nope. Did it not come off when you guys had sex? No. I don't think so. Sometimes she just, you know, she just keeps her shirt on and she doesn't want me to do anything. Just like, she wants what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> she knew what she wanted, that's what she wanted. Was and it just missionary sex? Yep. And when she, when she, her final resting place, was that just naturally what she was wearing? You didn't change her or anything like that? Okay. Did you have to see any of that stuff? Pictures or anything? No. I asked not to. Okay. They said I could. I was like, no, I don't want. And I've, and I've prayed for those hazmat workers that I'm, I'm sure it was hazmat, right? I had the. You were part of it. Yeah. And like, we were all there. We were all there. I'm sorry. I, I never wanted to see it. I, I was afraid that I'd rather have to be there. I, I don't. I don't. Never wanted to know what what the aftermath was. And they they, they said like you know if this ever got to 
ever got like a preliminary hearing that I, I would have to see him just to be prepared and not have a reaction, an initial, an initial reaction, but I was like, I don't want to see him. Do you feel like your lawyers were fair to you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were all, I mean, they were my only human contact, really. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of like, almost like a guidance counselor, almost. Yeah. Did you feel like you were driving the bus, though? With your decisions you made? Yeah, or I, mean, no? I was like, I, you know, there was a lot of things I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Like, sure. maybe there was a lot of things they never told me. Like, you know, um, like stuff that came out like afterwards, like the whole Nicole, Nikki Kessinger article and Denver Post and all that kind of stuff. They told me like afterwards and everything, but it was, I always felt like anything I was telling them, they were, they were, they were gonna do. Like the whole taking the plea deal and everything, I told them that's what I wanted to do. And they, you know, they, they asked me like, seems like a hundred times, are you sure you wanna do this? Are you sure? Like once you sign this, like, um, I guess I, I, up until sentencing, I had the time to like, you know, back out, but like, I, they always, even before we walked in the court, we're like, are you sure? So yeah, this is, this is it. Like, okay. They, ne they never told me this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. They always just said, this is your decision, you know, like, if you want to take this farther, we're, you know, and John said he, he was right, he had all kinds of motions written and all kinds of stuff that were like really creative and because he'd never been in something like this before and he was ready to fight. And I was just like, I, I didn't want you to have to do that. Not for me, not for, not for something that the story isn't right, isn't true. Because mm -hmm. it, it would just only gotten worse. Right. For everybody. For all three of you, for everybody that was involved in it. Are you still glad you did? Yeah, I, I mean, I never, I never thought I'd be in prison the rest of my life, but like I, I don't want people to have to keep going through this every day of their lives, knowing that you know there's a trial hanging over their head. Or I mean, if, if it ever got that far, I don't know yet. Yeah. But like, I didn't want people to have to relive it you know, every day. Yeah. Did they have to ever see the pictures? Did you say that again. Did they have to ever see the pictures? Frank and Sandy and all that? No. No, they never saw that. They saw some things. They didn't. They didn't see anything of that. Okay. Yeah. Who shielded that from them? That's one. Like, I just didn't want them to have to see anything or hear anybody talk about what anything or any part of it. Or like you know, any anybody bash their daughter. You know, like anybody to ruin. Like you know, to hear what you know. Some of my friends had a negative. You know impact on her from her or like had a description of her that it, that they didn't, that didn't match you know something like that i didn't want them to hear that either but like, i didn't want them like you know that anybody had to trash her memory like i wanted like them to know like she was you know she's a loving wife she's beautiful she always helped everybody else all her friends her lucas friends everybody i just wanted i, I didn't i didn't want anybody to take away from what she did we Price. tried to get you to say that that night. I know, I know I but know. Um, do you remember that? I remember. I was just like. I know you obviously weren't I, ready to say I, that. I, I, I know. It's like, you know, like after my dad left, we both came in and like, all right, we got most of the story. Let's get to the, the true story. I'm just like, I just wanted to bang my head against the table. But in the end, I think you did the right thing. And even though it's hard to hear, um, there's a lot of people who thank you for what you did. I think your whole life has been thinking of others except for one brief moment, you know. I think you really did think of others when you made that choice. So I personally thank you, right? Because it, it would have been hard for the three of us to go through about this hard and for everyone else about that hard, right? Yeah, it was anybody that was family or friends. Right. It been, you know, just exponentially harder for everybody. Yeah. yeah. I think you did the right thing. So you haven't told your parents what happened. You just told them I'm pleading guilty for a reason. Yeah, I've told them like on the phone, even because they they're still. I don't know, they, you should fight it. You should. Get... Uh, they've they've got letters from like Australia, from England. I mean, of like the 35C in Colorado and stuff, like you know, improper counsel or something like that. Counsel. Mm -hmm. Effective counsel. Effective counsel, and um, I mean, some of the stuff they've you know 
you know, they say about you know the dry patch, how it's not like FDA approved, how it can alter somebody's mind, like, um, uh, like it, it was some kind of condition. But there's some else they call like CPSD complex uh, post traumatic stress disorder, something like that. Have been like some people from England have had it. It's like uh, they've been in a, a emotionally abusive relationship and stuff like that. I mean, just like, you know, some of the, some of the little subjects they put in there, like, yeah, I can relate to it, but, like, it doesn't make up for the fact what happened. But, like, they've, they, they've got a lot of support from, they've got a lot of hate mail, a lot of phone calls, a lot of, like, you know, stuff like that. I wish they never happened. But they, you know, they, they get some support, which is good, but on the phone, they still think, you know, there's a chance that I could get out. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to ever think your kid's going away forever, like, yeah, you, I mean, they, they you don't want to fathom that. They tell me to fight it, like, you know, you know they don't, not every day, but in their, on their bad days, yeah. they'll get a bad message or a bad letter, and then I'll just come to her back. Is that more your mom or your dad? My mom. Yeah. She loses it a lot. Yeah. On the phone, my dad's usually trying to, you know, like, hey, don't talk about this stuff on the phone with me. Because it's just gonna rile, it's gonna rile you up, and it's gonna make him go back to his cell, and he's gonna just kind of think about that all night. Right. And that as that happens a lot. Yeah. Would you ever want him to know what you're telling us today? I'd rather just tell them myself. Yeah. So they're coming. I think they're gonna try to make a visit in like May or so. So they don't. Know. Do they still think that Shanann killed the girls? They still believe that, even though I told them I play guilty for a reason, but they think that I was, their, their words, like, railroaded by the leaders. Yeah. Because they, you know, they felt like I, they, they pressured me to do it. Yeah. To, do you feel like that? No. No. no they, they asked me plenty of times. This is like, you know, they want, they wanted to fight. Like, they were, if I said fight, they would have just, you know, yeah. gone and, Found their gloves. Yeah. Just went yeah. in there and did it. You know? Yeah, it's like, no, I just, I can't have you do that. So, Chris, you care about others deeply, I can tell. You worry about others. Um, and I've asked you, you know, a bunch of times today, but you're not just telling us that you did it because you feel bad for Shanann's memory. You did it? Okay. I have to say, like, you know, after this was all over, you know, people would bring up, like, Oh my gosh, I bet you're going to find out that Chris, you know, used to torture animals and, you know, all this stuff. You can imagine, like, you know, hearing that someone's capable of that, what have they done in their past, those kinds of things. Can you think back to your past at all, like your childhood, and think about any other moments that maybe you felt this same rage? I mean, obviously you didn't do anything like that, but maybe felt that rage and, like, what would have triggered that or anything like that? Not really. I mean, I was always, like somebody that tried to coax people down not to like if somebody wanted to fight somebody else I kind of got in a fight like when I was in third grade but it was like you know we rip each other's shirt when I cry mm -hmm. you know it was like stupid mm -hmm. I was just like why did I why did I do that and like maybe that was like my only like bad thing I did in school <laughs> so I can't think of did anything. you feel it on the inside whether you didn't act it out like did you feel like like if someone bullied you at school or if someone whatever, like would it still be inside you? Like did you feel like that even though you didn't actually act on it? I don't believe because I was always, you know, I never really talked to many people. So I never, I mean people knew who I was, but they didn't really, I mean, I never really spoke to many people. That's why I never had a girlfriend in high school. I mean, I was always kind of like, just fine under the radar. Did you feel like you had low self-esteem? I won't say low self-esteem, it was just like, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be part of like a group or a clique. I just like, you know, I had a couple friends and sat at a lunch table with them and, or sat out, in, they call it like the fish pond area, and, you know, just chilled out there. And I didn't really want a whole lot of friends. It was kind of like just close knit. And I just wasn't out there. I mean, you know, I guess people knew who I was, but it wasn't a matter of like it was popular or anything. Mm -hmm. Can you attribute that to anything in your childhood? Why you were. No, like my that? sister was always the popular one. Uh -huh. She was more like my mom, like more like outgoing and like me and my grandma would always sit outside in middle school waiting for her to come out and pick her up and she'd always be the last one out because she'd talk to everybody in the hallway. 
And my grandma's always like, where is she at? Just let she know we're waiting. But, you know, it's, I was just the opposite of her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sometimes you have kids that are like the same, and some of you have opposite, and me and my sister are completely opposite. Maybe I just drew on that, that I didn't want to be the popular one. I wanted to be just, you know, just a regular, regular guy. Mm -hmm. So but there was not really like bullying or not like I remember. Nobody ever really came up to me or wanted to fight me or... Never got made fun of, never... No, I mean, I was... I had braces and I had like a bowl cut for a while. I guess it could have made it fun. I think most kids that. did. <laughs> the 80s and 90s were cruel. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, a Jim Carrey cut with a bowl on your head. Just yeah. wave them around. But yeah, it was, I don't think there was anything that would, anything that would be pent up inside me from... From childhood. childhood. I know you talked about your dad having an addiction when I was talking to you. That was after I left. Uh, I left home. Is that was it cocaine or something or? It was, it was some type of powder. I'm not sure if that okay. was cocaine. I guess How do you think that affected you? I don't think it affected me. At, uh, well, it did affect me, but it didn't, didn't like take like deep down. It didn't like really hurt as much as I thought it would. It was kind of weird. Because when my, I think it was my mom or my sister told me, like when they had talked to me about it, it didn't seem to register. Like I said, like he would just change subject. And like when I talked about it, he eventually, um, immediately changed the subject. I was like, because they found like, you know, cuts on his like CDs and stuff where he would like, you know, like oh. separate it and stuff like that. Because yeah. he, he had a car dealership. I mean, find guys that do that kind of stuff all the time, I guess. But he was just coping with like, I never came back home, and because before I met Shannon, and it was just. Did you feel guilty that he's now using drugs because you never came back home, like he lost his kid? No, I was. I never really knew why he was doing it. I, I, after the fact, I knew it was because he was coping with that, but I never knew why he really actually turned to drugs. My mom thought he was having an affair because like, all this money was going somewhere else just for the drugs, but. Like, I'm not myself, I never use drugs. So, I always try to tell them, like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, why do, why do you need to use this? And just, like, you could use this for a whole lot better better things, you know, just don't throw your life away. I mean, like, because you can see in his face, like, you know, it's like, eyes, re or, like, everything was getting, like, you know, like, the drugs through your face, and, like, and your skin was getting all loose, and, like, you was losing a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. His nose was bleeding all the time, and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff like that. And I was just telling like, hey, you know, you smoke like every day of your life since you're like 15 or 16. You're like, you know, I can't get you to stop that, but I get you to stop this. Right. And he, he put it away, I guess, pretty quick after I talked to him about it. Hmm. You think you were closer to your dad than your mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we always went to races together, and yeah. this, you know, he always trained my sports, uh, played a couple of school sports, rec right ball, all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Mom would come to sometimes, and my dad was always there. Always there, yeah. Even if I wasn't playing, he'd just come there just, just in case I can't win in there. Aww. So, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wondered if they hadn't visited because they didn't weren't ready to visit, or if it was a money thing, or, you know, like, here getting the time off. Colorado. Yeah, you. Like, visit here? Yeah, visit here. Well, I just told him, like, well, they can't drive in the snow, so it's kind oh. of like, you know, I don't want... It's These just, roads are bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, um... I think it's like an hour from either Madison Airport, whichever yep. way it is. I told him like wait till springtime. Good advice. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. It, it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they have money to get here. They sold my toolbox to yeah. get some money to come out here. Okay. So yeah, so they'll they'll come out here and like it said April, but I was like, you know, just maybe push it till June. They said they can somehow have a blizzard out here in April. Yeah. Too, yeah. Like, like a late spring blizzard, yeah. So yeah. lake effect stuff is crazy yeah mm -hmm. and how are you how are you doing mentally i mean the f first time i when i first i mean i didn't know i was coming here obviously i mean i just when i was at drdc like I, swooped you up, didn't it was, I was there a week like first day i got there they put me to the ringer like i had like 11 tests to do like 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 mental tests like reading math all kinds of stuff it's see where my IQ was and then I just sat there the rest of the week, and then Sunday came along, and after dinner they said, "All right, strip down, and put this on." I'm like, okay, and then walked outside and put me in the van. I'm just like, good. I had no idea what was going on. 
and then we stopped in Sterling, which really freaked me out. I was just like, I don't want to do this because I heard so many horror stories about that place. And, mm-hmm. and uh, they just stopped producing the bathroom and then we kept going. In the prison? Do they use the bathroom at the prison? Yeah, it was like at, a, at the watchtower outside. Oh. And um, we went to Nebraska, sheriff's office there, and then another sheriff's office in Iowa. He used the bathroom, ate breakfast, and then got here. I asked him, I only talked to him once. I'm like, can you tell me like, uh, where we're going? Like, just the destination state? He's like, I don't know. So there was like a, it was like one of those like transport vans, like mm-hmm. where it was like at just the middle where I was sitting there and uh, I could see out the window and I could see like, they would put in an address each time. Like they had like four sets of addresses to each one they had to go to. I, they just would never tell me where we were gonna end up. What was, what did they say your IQ was? I was like 140, 35 or something like that. Is that high? I don't even know what that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was took me back to high school for real. I'm like, <laughs> the parts of the city on all that stuff. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of word problems, a lot of like uh, geometry, a lot of like, you know, patterns, like if this was moved this way, and then it was like, like a series of them, like, all right, what's this one going to be? It's a lot of a lot of stuff like that, but like the further like, further you got along, the harder it got. I was yeah. just like, it's like great. And it was like they give you this little take take that pen and take the little tube out in the middle, and that's where you're using to fill in these little oh. little scantron sheets and everything. I feel like it was high school again. Do you know how long you're gonna be here? Neither do I, by the way. No. And do you know? Are you going to get a job? I, uh, if if uh, since I'm staying here, well, since I'm got staffed here, hey, you have to work. Oh, so what's your job now? I don't have one yet. Okay. They haven't moved me out of the accept or evalu- acceptance and evaluation assessment oh. and evaluation. Oh, You're yes. still in that phase. Okay. And how long will that take? Well, right now, like since I've been staffed here, I'm just waiting for them to move me over to a different unit. And are you in uh, Gen Pop right now? No. No, I'm in a unit. There's like 11 or 12 of us on there. There was okay. like 22 when I first got there, but they've been transferred to the other prisons around. Yeah. And what are the other guys like? They're like, they're fine. Like the first time, like I sat out and ate like a breakfast or lunch one. I was, I was scared. You nervous? Scared? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, this, this, this hasn't happened. Like nonsense. You know, I just never happened. Yeah. Like, like, like I said, they locked, they locked the hallways down and I got moved to Colorado. Yeah, well, I yeah. heard that. Yeah. So it was like, you know, being next, like, right, like this, eating next to somebody, I was just like, is he gonna, like, take a sport and try to stab me or something, or what? But it's totally different here. I mean, people know who I am, but, like, they don't, like, you know, run at me or jump at me or, like, apparently they, um, the guys that work here, they, they know that, I guess, other Maxes are, you lock down like 23, 22 hours a day. Oh, so then this isn't all right place to be? For like, like other Max, for other Max guys. Good. Yeah. Oh, they said it's the best Max, but the worst medium. Oh. Because uh, if, if you're Max, you're working. So you're, you know, out of your cell working, like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're a clerk or if you're in the kitchen or mm-hmm. if you're in the rec area, you're doing something. Okay. But um, yeah, they said like, if you get staffed here, it's, it'll be best for you. Plus, they say it's not as like rowdy as some of the other places. Yeah, oh, that's pretty intense. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I'm I'm going to the GP area. I just don't know when. And you think it'll be while you're here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, they said like uh, I guess it could take you know it takes a while to get moved from max to medium because in Colorado I was classified as minimum restrictive, mm-hmm. but with the charges it would have been medium, but here it's automatic max. And what are the other guys in for, do you know? Uh, they said most guys in here are for like gang snitches and uh, sex offenders and mainly people that have 20 years or more. So people who were in for a long time and who would otherwise have a pretty hard time at a jail yeah. for whatever they did, yeah. whether it be snitching or, or yeah, like, you know, children. Or, yeah, or there's uh, some people from other states here as well and um, I guess there's a couple cops here too. Okay. Just, you know, just things have happened and they just don't think it'd be better. It'd be a lot better if they're here and not at another prison. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of jobs are available? I mean, 
Well, it's, it's um, like they'll they'll probably have me in the kitchen, or like that's where everybody starts out, like mm -hmm. either washing dishes or like you know putting food on the trays or helping you know, pots and pans, something like that. Mm -hmm. But they have like libraries. They have like you know I think this is the PSU area, the psych area. So they'll have like different guys doing clerk stuff around here. I mean they've I didn't, they have over like 300 GP guys here that are like live here. So they have a job for every one of them. Wow. There's even a guy that shovels the sidewalks. I think we saw him. Yeah, we saw, we him, saw him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want. I don't know if I want to be that guy. <laughs> Not here. Do you um? Do you go to therapy? Do you have see a psychologist? There's, do you? there's actually the one I. Uh, her name's like Pavier or something like that. She's uh she seems like once a month, and she's actually from Aurora. Really? Yeah, it was weird. I walked in, and I saw a Bronco flag. I'm like. <laughs> like, uh, okay, who are you? But, um, yeah, it's... Does she give you therapy? Or? No, she just, like, talks to me just to see if I need anything or, if, like, like if I need psych meds or if I need anything like that, which I've declined all that stuff. But most people in my unit have meds. That's just to I'm have saying. them, or do you think they need them? Well, it's, like, a special management unit. Like, they just put me on there to keep me away from GP. And, like, most people either, like, just have, like, some type of medication they're on. But you don't take anything? No. They just keep me in there until the security advisor says, you know, you can get moved to keep you down the hall. What kind of stuff, like food and stuff, do you miss the most from the outside? Food? Yeah. Well, I know from, you know, my last time in North Carolina, Bojangles, that was really good. I don't know if you guys ever, you guys ever go to North Carolina or no? Mm -hmm. Is that barbecue? It's like, it's chicken and biscuits. Mm -hmm. And that barbecue place down the street from the PD. Mm -hmm. yeah. Smokehouse, yeah. George Boys. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the burn ins, I miss that. And just, you know, you know, I miss dance cooking, that's for sure. Like her spaghetti sauce and her fried pizza. Yeah. Fried pizza. I don't think yeah. I've heard of that. What is I've that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> so her mom has, or I think it was her, her mom, her, her grandmother on her mom's side had this like this dope, uh, homemade dough you can make and uh, just make up the dough and she would make it up with Bella and Celeste sometimes, with, like a little smaller one, but she'd make the really big one. And then um, she would uh, put it in the oven, the bottom oven, and let it sit there for a couple hours, not with it on or anything, just let it rise. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once it's done, take it out, form it, throw the, the spaghetti sauce she has, and spread it around and throw the mozzarella and pepperoni and put it on the oven 350 and hmm. but what part of it is fried though well they have some parts that you call grill you can put oh. on the okay put on the uh stove too okay it's pretty it's really good i mean it's really thick yeah so you got apparently we need this from yeah sandy <laughs> i will work on that yes <laughs> right a note <laughs> yeah are you able to stay out of trouble here yeah uh, no. nobody's getting any fights Nobody's, you're not getting written up for anything, you're not getting... Okay. I try to keep a little profile here, so I don't want to... I guess they say if you get like two contact reports, they'll ship you out if you work here. Mm -hmm. to, another, to another location? Yeah. Oh, so then, does that incentivize people keeping their nose down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I guess a couple guys got busted for having a cell phone. Oh. Yeah. How they got it in. No kidding. Yeah. Like, that stuff just baffles my mind, how that stuff gets to... I mean, they, they won't even let, like, if somebody sends me a letter and it has, like, even, like, someone sent me a Christmas card with glitter on it, they'll let me have it because it's glitter. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's contraband. So, like, yeah, I don't have people get cell phones and stuff in here. So what do you do with all these letters that are coming into you? Most of them, like, I just have, like, this, if somebody writes me once, I'll never write them. Just because I don't know, like, who they are, like, where they're from. I'll keep it. If it's, a, if it's like a weird letter, I'll just try to throw it away. If it's like a supportive letter, I'll keep it around just like you know, a supportive letter. And then like, like I've had some people like write me like a second and third time, but they've changed the way they talk or like they've said different things. Like there's, there's like this this dude in like California that, that wrote me. He's like a, he's a senior in high school and wrote He's like, okay, dude. I, I look at the name, like, okay. Shred it up, threw it away. He wrote me again, like, like two weeks ago. Totally different. Like, never mentioned, like, his age. Never mentioned his study. Like, hey, like, I support you. I'm like, all this, like that. Like, if I didn't recognize his name, 
I would have known like he was just an 18 year old kid, senior trying to, trying to just like probably just get information. Trying to, you know, because there's, there's been like journalists and like mm -hmm. other people like, like you could kind of tell, like they ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But I tried to like take into effect who's writing me and like just not to respond. Like I've responded to a few people just because like either my parents have talked to them on the outside and then I kind of know, okay, it's a real person. Oh. But like there's some people that like, it seems like they're just trying like to get help for themselves too. Like s some people ask, like you know, like like just for spiritual advice. They're asking for spiritual yeah. advice from you. Yeah. yeah, like you know, if they're not asking about the case, I'll write them back. If they ask about the case, I don't write them back. Yeah. You think you'll be in love again? There's a lot of women out there that are in love with you. No. I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm not the guy that's down the street or whatever it is. <laughs> I've heard enough about that guy since I've been here. What do you what have you heard about him? He got engaged over a letter. He did, yeah. That that's pretty insane. But yeah, I don't see myself being a little bit ever again. Do you have some ladies that are giving you a lot of like just telling them that telling you that they're in love with you and that kind of stuff. Well, I've had a couple letters that have been like, you know, I hear you get a lot of letters from like from lady friends that tell you all you need to know. I'm like, I, just, I don't get those letters. Trust me. Like there was, I guess there was one letter in Colorado. Someone sent me a picture of them in the key, and then it's like went on from there. That was like the only letter I ever got. That was like that. But the press took it and just went with it. Yeah. Do you, you ever get requests from the press? Mm -hmm. And how does that work? Tear it up. Oh, really. uh, so are you personally already planning? Well, I, I don't like you know kind of back. Would they allow you to talk with them? Mm -hmm. Would they allow them in here to talk with you? I don't know. Uh, I guess some stations have asked to come in here and talk to me, but they have told them no. Oh, but they're uh, I've gotten letters from like you know Denver like Denver stations who would not want to talk to me, mm -hmm. and then quotation marks off the record. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Anything I write. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, I just tear it up, throw it away. Have you thought about, like, writing a book or anything like that? No, that's, you know, I, nothing like that. My mom, you... my mom and dad have been sorry, what No, go ahead. My mom and dad are saying maybe you should, like, write down, like, how you feel or, like, you know, how you've been dealing with this type thing. Just write it down and that would be my story, but I'm just like, I'm not right. That's not me. I mean, I've always been had a really crazy imagination. So, I, like when I was a kid, like I even convinced my teacher I was going to I went to Japan over the summer or to China or something. But she said, you know, like you know, you should just write down like you know your story, like how you cope with this. Why did you convince your teacher you had gone to another country? It was just like what you did over the summer, and I was like, yeah, went to China. I started writing. <laughs> <laughs> she actually believed it. I, I was really convincing. So well, you're a smart dude. Yeah. It was, it was, and they, my parent teacher conference said, so how was China? What? <laughs> <laughs> nope. So earlier you were talking about how this experience you're going to want to help people. What do you mean by that? So like, like this couple letters that I've gotten, like this one, this one girl, she's in like an abusive relationship and she just can't find a relationship like with God and like I've been I've read I never read the Bible before before all this like mm -hmm. in well County I read it because you know okay. in the segregation hole there it was like that was the only book I got and I was like okay I, I read it cover to cover and I never thought I could being how, how many pages were in the Bible but right. it stuck with me and like I've been reading it more and more here like I got a different version here I've just been reading it and just writing down like couple scriptures a day, like to get my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. They've been like making a little journal and stuff like that. And my uncle Johnny and uh, his wife, um, Martha, they're actually uh, missionaries. And um, and one of my cousins is actually as well. And they've been helping my mom and dad. And they've been, they, they, they looked at a couple, a couple of my letters and they were, they, were, they were amazed at how like, how mature I've gotten with like, the Bible and everything, the scripture and everything. It's just like, one thing, one gift that I did get was a good memory, as far as like being able to memorize stuff. Right. 
and like that's what happened with cars and with the oil foot. I can just memorize acronyms like that, and I've been memorizing a lot of different scripture. I can just kind of like help people that way. And just like there's been inmates that have, have left my unit and went to a different place and have written me just to ask like, you know, can you give me a couple of scriptures to help me through this? Like, do you know of any? I'm just you know, I can help somebody that way. Yeah, that's good. Do you get to go to school or anything? They don't have any else programs here. Oh, they don't. It's a accept or evaluation prison, so they don't. This is, I think, this is when they have the sex offender class in here. Mm. That's the only thing they really have. Are you gonna go to that? No. <laughs> no, I, I always ask like, why are people going there? And they're like, you don't want to go in that class. Like, well, <laughs> you stay away from that okay. class. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing they have here, but they have other. Like that's like the map of the prisons they have here. Yeah, so looking at that earlier. Oh yeah. wow. They have a lot here. Yeah. Like three right in this area. Yep, they're right around here. I was just amazed that when I one thing I did see out the window when I first there was like a neighborhood that's right next to the prison. Yeah. So just like is that the same thing. Yeah. Is that weird. Because <laughs> like in Colorado it seemed like they're all like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Yeah, Easy. Well, um, we might take a little break right now. I think it's almost time for you to eat lunch. Yeah. Like 20 about, minutes? Yeah. But like the polygraph. <laughs> Everything just like... <laughs> 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 I look up the time, I'm like, oh, wow. This went four hours. Here we go. They might let us come back and talk to you. Okay. Um, there might be a couple more things you want to go over. Okay. Is that something you're up for? Awesome. Okay. And then the other thing is, we might be back in a month and a year and two years if you're up for it. Um, okay. Now that's way down the road, but I guess maybe in the back of your mind, just think about that. And, um, I hope so far today's been all right for you. Yeah, it's been. Honestly, when I walked in, I was just like, wait, I know these people. I know these guys? <laughs> I looked at you, I'm like, like that, that's not the site counselor. That's, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're Colorado people. So then let's pass that A&E sergeant. I was like, all right, who am I meeting? I, I go, yeah. it's not the A&E sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, there's a possibility we might not make it back today. I just want to let you know, but okay. we might. Um, so uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. Oh, thanks yeah. for coming. I yeah. Total took me off guard. I didn't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And again, um, this isn't it. Your case is over. It's closed. So that's not that's not what today's about. Okay. We really appreciate it. You did a lot of things really good, really well, really good. You made a lot of good decisions. And obviously, we're here because of. Just okay. one bad decision, but I think that you've taken steps to get past that. Um, so, yeah, we might come back after lunch if that's alright. That's fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can grab somebody. Can I have what you guys flying to? Uh, I think I had the better drive. I think you probably did too. <laughs> Mine was like 50 minutes, ours was like two hours. Yeah, it's snowing. Snow. It's pretty nasty like out there. Probably. Yeah, the wind's blowing. Not like wind like Colorado, then? It's a hell of a lot colder. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, the roads aren't getting cleared like they would get cleared in Colorado. Yeah. I think they just have so much. Yeah, you know, it just that. comes in and just dumps. Yeah. Colorado just melts within a couple hours right. here. Just, honestly, I haven't seen it melt here since I've got Well, that's the thing. Everyone's yeah, houses piles. are just piled, you know, like, oh, it's the next snow and they just pile it on top. <laughs> so it doesn't look like anything melts. No. <laughs> it's just a problem. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys go outside for rec or anything? Or? No, not when it's. Has to be over 50 degrees. Oh, so you won't be out for a while. <laughs> no, they have like a rec, uh, like a little basketball court down the hall from where my unit is. So we get there about five days a week for like 40 minutes. Nice. So it's a good chance to just get out and just run around a little bit, just mm -hmm. stretch your legs a little bit. Yeah. Any weights or anything you can use? Yeah, there's some weights in there. We go with another unit, and they're uh, it's the infirmary unit that, go with, that goes with us, and most of them are like in wheelchairs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like, I just like let them do. I don't want to get like get in the way. Just like let them like they have like the pull downs and the, the right lats and all that kind of road machine and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah but I think they have like a track or something like there you can run around. Yeah. Uh, once we can go outside. Mm-hmm.
Colorado, they let you go outside. Like, I never went outside, but like at the DRDC, they just said, do you want to go outside? Let's go outside. That's cool. <laughs> well, thanks. Buyer beware. <laughs> like, hey, should I go eat more wreck today? You're like, no. <laughs> like, no, it's like, it's like 30 degrees outside. You can go outside if you want. Like, okay. But their, their version of wreck was like, they put you out in a little cage and let you like, kind of walk around for a little bit. Yeah. At DRDC. It was a little different there. Hey, if we don't want to come back, I just want to let you know I talked to your dad the other day. Okay. And, and just to get your property released to him. Oh, a phone and stuff? Yeah, okay. your phone and, and um, what else? Wallet. Your wallet. Okay. Yeah, and we have some other things too. So, But I have to wait for the DA to release all that stuff. And then it's okay. Red tape crap. So. Gotcha. But then we'll, get, we'll, we'll send it off to him. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know he wanted my phone. Just did yeah. a lot of pictures on that. That's what he said. I think I had that phone since like 2016, so there's a, there's a good amount on there. Yeah. If we don't make it back today, it's going to be because of some of their scheduling. It's not that we don't want to talk to you some more. Oh, it's fine. There's more things we can talk about. Okay. Um, but if we don't make it back, that's why. Okay. Yeah, it's a holiday, so I figured they'd be pretty much open. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't see many people walking through the hallways when they came down here. Usually there's a ton. Mm -hmm. Of visitors or what? No, just a ton of people, just like workers walking up and down. It oh, seemed pretty see. sparse. Yeah, it did seem sparse, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That was one thing I was shocked about when I walked around here. I was always used to seeing everybody in handcuffs walking around the hallways. Mm -hmm. Here, just walked up and down. That is interesting, man. I thought the same thing. I couldn't tell who was who. Yeah, it's like you, you can't necessarily you tell. Got, you see the red tag, it's like an inmate, but somebody else, it's somebody who works here. Oh. Or like somebody that's like actual civilian who works here. So then you're not in shackles and handcuffs that often? I haven't been since I got here. You're kidding. Huh. I was, that's, that's why I was amazed. I was like, when the guy took me in the hallway, I was like, anything? No, just keep walking. Yeah. It's, that's uh, that's my psych conscious was saying, this isn't Max when she first got here. But no, it's just like Max or something. Mm. Hmm. It just like, you know, if, if you if you want to act up, they'll you put you in. Use it, you'll earn those shackles back. Oh yeah, they, they'll put you in handcuffs, take you to the hole. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll ship you out of here. Do they have a solitary here? Oh yeah. They'll strap you out of the bed. Oh yeah? Yeah. Jeez. You can't move. Yeah. A reminder of yeah, behave, right? Yeah, it's like don't not that don't, you need it. Don't pass through, don't pass anything that's not yours. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're gonna Do you get a by like commissary and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's different here. It's a... Uh, it's like a bubble sheet instead of like Colorado is like a little little touch screen you do. Uh -huh. But here it's like a little scantron, you send it off to like Missouri and it's, it's the same company. But it's the it just takes longer to get here. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just like what kind of stuff can you buy? Uh like ramen soup and peanut butter and uh oatmeal, like lemonade mix, stuff like that. I usually just get the, the oatmeal and the ramen soup. Do your parents put money on your books then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how like that restitution stuff's gonna work. I'm sure like that'll like whatever whoever sent me money on the canteen will probably like it'll take a little bit of it too. Oh yeah. It's right here. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right.